Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm calling to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, October 13, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. Is my nurse's roll call, please? Mayor Alahuzas? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Commissioner Terrapani is absolutely an excuse. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by the city attorney following with the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, as the citizens of the city of Tarpon Springs meet together to, do, to address our local concerns and opportunities, we give thanks to you for the bounty that we enjoy in all aspects of our community life and for the peace and beauty that we enjoy each day. We ask for your inspiration to strive for excellence in our endeavors to serve the public Grant us peace in our world and harmony between all people to your greater glory. This we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. We are now going to the public comments on the items that were not going to be discussed this evening. Mrs. Manuzas, have we received any emails? No emails were received, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Jeff, do we have anyone online that are wishing to speak? If anyone would like to speak on items not on the agenda, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is a presentation, Anklo River Dredge Project Update. Mr. LeCours. Mark, you were muted, but I assume you just handed it off to me. Okay. <laughs> I did. Go okay. ahead, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director. Um, so for this item, I'm going to give you an update on the Anklote River dredge project status. Um, so generally speaking, um, as you know, the dredging of the Anklote River consists of two parts, the project does anyway. The, the federal dredge, which is the United States Army Corps of Engineers responsibility, and the extended turning basin, which is the city's responsibility. These two parts are intended to be completely, excuse me, completed simultaneously taking advantage of contractor mobilization, temporary pipeline construction, and temporary spoils treatment facilities. Design work is completed for both of these projects, and we're waiting, completing the completion of the federal procurement process, which has been delayed, and I'll elaborate on that here in a second, um, in order to, yeah, wait, waiting on these things to move the projects forward. So um, for the federal dredge, the Army Corps received bids from contractors in September. And as weirdly as this seems to be a phenomenon, the low bidder was deemed to be um, unqualified by the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, the second lowest bid exceeded the government's cost estimate by 25%, boy, more than 25%. And because of that, um, the government was not permitted to automatically award the contract to the second lowest bidder. So instead they began neg a negotiating process. And uh, in some more recent news, um, the mayor and I and the city manager reached out to the Army Corps. And uh, it appears that the Army Corps has identified additional funds that could be used to, um, to enter into the contract and award the contract to the second lowest bidder. Um, it's our understanding that that funding is held up in Washington, DC 
and um, the mayor reached out to Congressman Villarakis to, to try to work on that. Uh, mayor, I don't know if you wanted to comment any more on that, but um, uh, I can keep on moving through that if you want. Uh, the only thing I would like to say is that I spoke to Congressman Gus Villarakis this afternoon and he's still communicating with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, also with the uh, Secretary of Transportation in Washington, trying to transfer the, uh, the funds from the, from the project that was left over from the Puerto Rico project to uh, Anglo River. So I'm hoping that we'll be successful so we don't have to go through the bidding process. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I'll just continue here with my with my update. Um, some some updates on there were some general descriptions and and kind of clarifications on the scope of work for the federal dredge. Um, reminders that the scope of work for the federal dredge includes maintenance dredging of the so shoal locations in the Anklet River from the turning basin to the mouth of the river. Um, the dredging of the outer cuts near Anklet Key will be completed by the Army Corps in-house dredging team. Um, as has been the plan since about 2018. The core states that they have, quote, submitted this additional dredging within the fiscal 21, fiscal year 21 work request, but at this time they do not have a time frame for this or if funding will materialize. And then they go on to tell me that um, it could be February or March time frame for that funding to materialize. So needless to say, we will stay very close to this and continue to, to stay on top of that, keep the board informed. Um, in response to a question from Commissioner Vadikiotis regarding the in-water pipeline, according to the Corps, the scope of the contractor's work includes specifications to outline requirements for the pipeline and how it should not be placed to limit access to river boat traffic, and if the pipe is floating, it will be marked and visible. Permitting for the overland pipeline construction is completed. Permitting for the spoil site is completed. These two items, according to the Army Corps, would likely be one of the early items in their construction schedule, since both must be in place prior to the dredging initiating. Um, the spoil site construction is covered by the Army Corps contract and is the responsibility of the Army Corps contractor. Uh, construction and removal of the temporary pipelines is the responsibility of the Army Corps contractor. And um, restoration of the spoil site after the dredge work is completed will be the city's responsibility and is indeed actually required as part of our lease agreement. Um, funding for this work is covered by the state funding grant, and we are projected to have sufficient funds in the grant to complete this work based on recent estimates um, to move that material off. So I'll move on to the extended turning basin here. Uh, we're pretty much in a holding pattern as we wait for the procurement process on the federal side. Um, DEP, as you all know, is, has accepted the city's proposal to dredge the, the 1.93 acres of the extended turning basin. The uh, Department of the Army permit has been received, and now we're just waiting to receive our Pinellas County dredge and fill uh, permit, which we expect to receive pretty soon. And um, as you all know, we intend to negotiate a separate contract with the Army Corps awarded contractor to complete this additional dredge work, again, taking advantage of the fact that um, we have uh, some significant cost savings doing it this way. The Army Corps has no objections, of course, to this approach. Uh, so again, we're waiting on the procurement process on the federal side before we can start any of that work. Um, I'll touch on the project schedule. Um, of course, I, I can't really comment too much on it as we're waiting on the, the procurement uh, to be completed, but um, if that does go through on a reasonable time frame, I would expect this work to begin sometime early next year, maybe into the spring. Uh, of course, schedule depends entirely on that procurement schedule, like I said, and a, a more precise schedule will be shared with the board and with the public as it becomes better defined. And uh, the last thing I'll, I'll point out or note in this update is that the Army Corps senior project manager and engineer will both be here uh, to attend a city commission meeting on the 17th of November, and they will be here to meet with the board um, make a brief presentation and answer your questions and the public's questions. So with that, I will uh, stop for uh, questions and comments. Uh, Bob, I wanna thank you for the presentation and, the, uh, and your hard work and you stay focused on this project. Also, I would like to say that uh, we stay in touch with the administrator of the Army Corps of Engineers. So any questions that we have, we're going directly to the top. And I'm hoping that we'll be successful to transfer the funds to our project so we can uh, 
uh, so we can be on schedule. Thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, we go to uh, commission uh, commission comments, Vice Mayor Carr. Uh, Mayor, I don't have any comments right now. Um, okay. I appreciate uh, the hard work by the staff there. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, first off, I want to thank staff's effort on this uh, and your effort, Mayor, getting in touch with Congressman Bularakis. Uh, really appreciate that. I know this is something that the whole board's been working on for uh, seemingly forever. Um, uh, Bob, I just I had a quick question on the scope of work. Uh, if you go back to the first page when it's discussing the outer cuts by Ann Quote Key, um, one of the notes there at the end, it says, you know, we do not have a time frame for this or if funding will materialize. I just had a question in terms of that funding. So is that saying the funding might not mater materialize for like February or the funding could not materialize at all? And that, that part of the project could be in jeopardy. I think what they're trying to tell me is that um, we won't know until February or March um, if that funding or when that funding will materialize. Um, sorry, there was some feedback there. Um, but it has been the Corps' intention all along to do this, to, to do this approach this way. Um, and whether they are able to squeeze in the funding for that fiscal year or maybe into the next fall, we don't know for sure. Um, but that has always been their intention to do it this way. And we will stay on top of it for sure. Okay, thank you. Um, and when they come here on November 17th, are they coming for... Um, like just our, our regular commission meeting or do you know if like they're going to be here the whole day will they be meeting or will they be going like out on the river or anything like that uh, they're coming to they're coming to meet with you specifically um and uh they're going to stay through the night and um meet with staff on the following morning um hopefully we'll have a lot to discuss um hopefully that project will be procured and moving forward um but that is the intention right now okay thank you i appreciate it those are my questions Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tequiotis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good news uh, on the uh, funding. I'm very happy to hear about that. Maybe we can get things moving a little quicker. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Sure. Okay. Um, the, um, um, I, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, on the timing on this, I, I tend to agree with Mr. Robertson, uh, but generally, uh, more realistically, probably the June time frame is when the uh, dredging would actually start. Um, there's some environmental issues um, that we're going to get uh, bogged down in with regard to uh, uh, gopher tortoises in the wintertime. There's some monitoring requirements that may prevent us from actually constructing the uh, disposal, disposal uh, site, uh, disposal pond uh, in, in a timely manner. So we'll we have to kind of play that one by ear. Um, I do have a question on the, um, oh, and by the way, it is a 360 day period for completion. So if we got started in the spring or even June, we're not looking at completing the project until uh, uh, spring or Ju June of uh, 2022. So just uh, if we could all be mindful of that. Um, I do have a question. I, I sent a memorandum concerning the uh, truck route uh, for the uh, moving the uh, disposal to the uh, landfill. Um, is the staff going to work to try and change that route or is that, I mean, is that something that the commission has to get involved and, and decide whether it's acceptable or not? Or I, I'm not sure how we're going to do that at this point or whether we would need to worry about it at this point. I, I just think it's something that's weighing on me and I would hope it weighs on some of the commissioners as well. Well, I would say there's probably two routes and they're both bad. Um, our choice in the permitting was to take the truck route and avoid the residential areas, including the Union Academy neighborhood, which would be, which is already, as you know, taking the brunt of mirrors and the other thing. So we'll probably two routes to route it to 19 and then back through the Union Academy neighborhood is, is bad. And of course, going down you know, alter 19 through town is not good either, but that is the designated truck route. So um, that was the decision we made. Obviously, if three of you decide to want to change it and us submit for a change in that, um, certainly that's when your ability to ask us and us to, to submit. Um, 
and we've got yeah. time to do that. We have time to do that. Is that yeah. what you said, C Major? Okay. Um, yeah. The um, I, I I just have a question as well as far as the funding, uh, Mr. Robertson. Where how, how do you calculate that we're going to have enough funds for the uh, uh, restoring the disposal site? Um, I mean, I, my, my numbers suggest something else, and I can go over those quickly, but what, what do you have? We're, we did a couple estimates that we've uh, recently updated with from a, a couple of sources, um, coming in somewhere around two hundred fifty dollars to $350,000 to haul that material off. Um, I'm projecting that we'll have somewhere around $350,000 left in the grant funding from the state. So that's why, that's why I say that I feel like we'll have sufficient funds from the grant to be able to move that material. Um, how, how many cubic yards are you projecting to move? 54,000. All right. Well, no, no, I, I, I agree with that number. And I kind of made the, um, I, I had a little bit of an oversight as well. Um, it's actually, and, and I guess maybe my understanding might be the same as yours, that when they talk about restoring the site, it's back to at grade the way we see it right now. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. What, what would because uh, actually there's 40,000 cubic yards that's going to go into uh, constructing the berms. That's right in the uh, solicitation. I, I, I went through that. So that would take it up to about, um, uh, actually my number was about 80,500 80, cubic yards that we would have to haul. And the um, number of truckloads based on my estimate would be about 6,700 truckloads um, of dirt. And um, I also kind of shopped around and looked at about $4 a cubic yard, but then I was reminded that that is okay for just a standard truck. Um, what's going to be needed is environmental truck because they have to be sealed and also washed down. There's some invasive uh, species requirement that the trucks have to be washed off before they leave the site. So there's going to have to be a, a, a wash down station for it. And um, so I suspect that cost is going to go up. And then when you take into account the uh, rent, I, I went all the way out till June of um, 2022 at the outside date, it came out to about $630,000. And, and I guess we're showing about 450 right now. I know that's state money, but uh, we, and I'm not saying that there's any issue right now. It's just being mindful of that when we go down the road. Um, see, manager of the course, I, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll also, uh, um, think ahead on this, just as you did with the uh, setting the money aside, uh, as far as uh, coming up with the external ex extended turning basin uh, dredge money that we had and then we lost. So um, I think we just need, need to be mindful of that. Um, the only thing, the and and then as far as the truck route goes, I. I, I know we've got a little time, but I would like for us to think out of the box a little bit. Um, maybe some alternative sites that don't even take it through town at all. Um, maybe somewhere else that, um, that I, and I don't know, I guess is what I'm getting at. I, I guess once we get up into this type of money and stuff, and I know part of the money is state, um, and know we t briefly talked about this before. I wasn't a commissioner about possibility of purchasing the property from uh, the Stamas family. I don't even know if they'd be interested in selling it. I, I didn't do know when I spoke to uh, uh, George Stamas some time ago, he said everything is for sale. So um, I'm not sure if he'd feel that way, but um, it's certainly um, with the amount of money that we're gonna be paying for hauling it. And of course, part of that state funds, um, it might be smart just to kind of look into maybe buying it, leaving the, the uh, material there and reusing that spoil site in the future whenever we need it. Um, I, I think the one thing was we didn't really realize what the cost of this uh, project would be, but as you can see, it's a fairly expensive thing um, as far as constructing the disposal site, the amount of time to get the permits and the amount of time we have to keep this property leased. Um, I think if we, all, if we go all the way back um, quite frankly, we're probably going to be about at a million dollars of what we spent on this uh, disposal site, including the rent by the time we're all done. And I think we could have probably bought the property for that by then. So um, that might be something that we could talk about. Um, commissioners, I don't know how you feel about that. Mayor, maybe we could do that in the future. Or if you're not interested, just proceed as we are. 
Are you waiting for an answer on that now? Well, I mean, it'd be nice, but if not, that's okay. Yeah, uh, I'm not ready to answer that right now. Okay. All righty. Well, anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I don't have anything else. I, I just uh, think it's good news that we've got the money. I, I think it's going to take a little longer to uh, get things started. And, and, um, and I think it's going to cost us a little more than what we think right now. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Likouris, uh I would like to ask you a question in regards to the, uh, the truck routes. Um, the, uh, the routes that you have uh, identified, uh, is it possible that we can have uh, two routes instead of just one? So we can split the other uh, trips. Yeah, I, I believe so. In in the permit, you can do that. Again, the other route would be to get to US 19, and then of course you'd have to come down probably MLK, and then then you know go through the Union Academy neighborhood to the to the spot. So that would probably be the that would be the other route that you would look at. Um, I don't know, Bob, do you know anything in the permitting to have two of them to, for their approval that they'd approve two to kind of separate the traffic or not? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, there, there's nothing specifically in the permit that would allow that, but I, I, I don't think it would be a problem if we were to do alternate routes or, for example, uh, set it a return route for the trucks that differs from the delivery route, for example. Um, you know, that might be, uh, the, the permit does say which, which route that the, the material will be transported, but it doesn't say which route specifically the trucks would have to go back on. So maybe just to cut the trap, the truck traffic routing in half, we could, as uh, the commissioner said, think outside the box and send those trucks maybe down to Klosterman up 19 or something, um, to avoid at least half the trips. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see that we split the, uh, you know, the, uh, the routes. That way, you won't have too many trips in one, you know, an alternate 19. We'll, we'll look at that and bring that back to you. Yes. Mayor's frozen. Oh. Vice Mayor taking over. There he is. Mayor, are you back? You, you were frozen for a minute there, Mayor. We could. Um... Can you hear us? Sure, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor, did you hear what I said? I don't know if I was transmitting or not. No. Yeah. You were, it, you were uh, blocked out, but I thought I heard you wanted uh, Commissioner Gatti Kiotis to drive one of the dump trucks to transport some of the dirt. Is that right? <laughs> hey, I'll do it. I mean, if it's that's what he's to you to spare time. time. I'm not going to take a hard stand on this. I just think that people don't realize the amount of impact that this is going to have. And I've said my say, I'm not going to argue with the commission over this thing or the staff for that matter anymore. It's going to be up to the residents and also to yourselves when this thing gets cooking. So thank you. I, I think yeah. it's good to have a secondary route. Yeah, I agree completely, Mayor. Um, a secondary route is important. Uh, Mark, what about the dump trucks coming down US 19 instead of going down um, Martin Luther King to go down the Mango Mears extension? So they stay out of the Union Academy. Well, the problem with that is we don't know what state of construction that's going to be. And that's probably going to be, and again, it depends on the timing. Maybe if the timing gets put back enough, um, there'll be some difference. But we got to account for the other item you have on the agenda tonight and, and the construction along there of phase one. Right. So I, I'm for looking at another alternative as well, too. It makes sense. I think uh, Commissioner Vatikio has brought up a good point um, with this. And so thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. um, we are now going to the uh, public comments. Uh, Ms. Manusas, have we received any emails on this item? No emails were received, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Jump, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Okay. Thank you, Bob. And we go to uh, consent agenda. Item number two is the minutes. A is the minutes 526, 2020 regular session. B is the minutes 6 9 2020 regular session. C is minutes 6 23rd 2020 regular session. 
and D is the minute 724, uh, 714, 2020 regular session. Number four is the attorney fees, Trask and Dinal, invoice October 2nd, 2020. Number four is the award file, number 210022, NJJ Water Sewer Revenue Sufficiency Study. And number five is the award file, number 210016, NJL, Main it support equipment and for uh, Motorola radios. Number six is the award file number 210025, CJJ facilities maintenance repair and operations and industrial supplies. Number seven is the award file number 210028, AM single source purchase, scale, refurbishment, and uh, relocation. Number eight is reject sole bid. Submitted for bid number 210020BJL, furnished and installed commercial, commercial steel building. And number nine is the renew file number 120122NJJ, maintenance for public restrooms at the Sponge Docks. Any of those items that you like to pull? Okay, um, we go to uh, commission comments. Anybody has any comments? None. Here, none. Public comments, Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails on these items? Items two through, through nine. No emails, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Jump. Have we uh, received, uh, have, do we have anyone online wishing to speak? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The chair will retain a motion. So moved. Second. And roll call. Mr. Radicatis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alhusis? Yes. Next is the uh, special consent agenda. Item number 10 is the award bid number 200167 BJL Mango Street Stormwater and Roadway Improvements. Mr. Lequeur, staff report. Yes, Mr. Robertson, were you given that one? Thank you, Mark. Again, Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director. For this item, we're requesting the board's approval to award a construction contract to Kaminga and Road Foods Incorporated for the Mango Street Stormwater and Roadway Improvements Project. The value of the contract is $839,968.04. The scope of the project is reconstruction of Mango Street from Distant to just near Azalea Street. The roadway will be widened and raised to address flooding. The project includes new stormwater infrastructure, construction of a new stormwater pond, and increasing the size of existing stormwater ponds. Sidewalk uh, and bike lanes are also included in the new roadway profile. Project is funded by the Penny Fund and by the Transportation Impact Fund and came in under budget um, and the, the construction schedule allows for 180 calendar days, to find, calendar days to final completion. And that is my staff report. I'll stop there for comment. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we are working with the Stone, uh, Stone Hatch people about the issue that they have, right? We are, and, and this section of road doesn't quite reach their entrance yet. That's gonna to have to come in phase two. Okay, so the, uh, the section between Azalea Drive and US 19, is that gonna be section uh, phase two? Yes, that is. Okay, thank you. Um, Vice Mayor Carr? Yeah, thanks Mayor. Um, Bob, thanks for the presentation on this and all the backup. Uh, I did speak with um, staff and the city manager uh, about this a little bit further. Um, one of the items that we had discussed in the past was with the housing authority and um, I did have a discussion with Bob Robertson about this as well, um, about trying to connect um, Mango Circle or Mango Loop and um, North Street. I think it's Mango. Yeah, Mango Loop and North Street. So, they, so they're aligned uh, when they come out on onto um, the Mears Mango extension. Um, Robin was one that was interested in having, um, she was with the housing authority. And then when the city um, rezoned the housing authority's land, um, she seemed to be open to discussing um, 
giving the ability to the city to move that road over so they're aligned better. Uh, I think it, it would be a safety um, improvement for the area. So I would just like to ask um, that that staff formally um, at least connects with Robin one more time um, during the, the beginning stages just to see if there's an opportunity to, to do that. So thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, my only question on this one, Bob, is is just regarding the phases. How many phases are there, and what's the phase timeline for, for this? Sure. So th this was actually going to be one big project from distant all the way to 19, and the funding uh, limited us so that we pr had to prioritize and break the project in two pieces. Phase one is this one, and phase two will be the second and final phase that would uh, widen and improve the stormwater on the east side of Mango Street. Um, the timeline on the second phase is, is not determined yet. Uh, I think we, we kind of stretched the stormwater funds um, out to the end uh, for other projects. And so this project is moving forward without stormwater funding. We'd like to try to build back up the stormwater fund um, capital reserve to be able to do projects like this. So I think it's probably a couple of years out before we start design on, um, before we move forward on phase two. Phase two design is done, I should say. I didn't mean to, uh, it was a mistake, I misspoke. Uh, the design is ready, so it's just a matter of getting a funds available for construction. Okay, that was my only question, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vettie Curtis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just uh, Vice Mayor Carr, I think that was pretty nice of you to take that initiative to uh, proceed with that. I, I have a question, how come the staff didn't think about this before? Or did they and they just didn't move on it? No, we, um, we did. We did, and we approached her on it, and the housing authority was not interested at the time we talked to them about doing it when we were doing it. But this this is a request from commit from Vice Mayor Carr to go back again for a second time and see if they've changed their mind on that issue. Yeah, well, I, I think it's called persistence, and I appreciate Vice Mayor Carr's uh, persistence on this matter. And um, how long is this project going to take, Mr. Robertson? Um, we've given the contractor 180 day uh, construction schedule. And are we going to complete this before we start phase two? Sorry. Or is there going to be an overlap? There will be no overlap. No, this will be completed before we do phase two. Three years after completion of this project? Probably a few years, yes. I don't have an exact date for you yet on that. Is And there's no way of, uh, I mean, is, there a, is it a money issue or is it just it's not needed. I, I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Well, it, it is a primarily a funding issue. Uh, we were able to widen phase two you know, using in-house staff um, so that it would match the same width, uh, at least the drive lane width. Um, so we have what you might call a temporary fix so that it matches up nicely. Um, but um, it's like I said, it's primarily funding issue. And there's no fun. There's no flooding problems in that phase two portion. Nothing significant compared to what phase one is. No, sir. Okay. I I, I guess you know there's going to be a lot of things. I'm going to wait till budget time again. But I, that's I think one that we should probably talk about. I just don't like leaving these projects stretching out that long from uh, Mears Boulevard uh, at alternate 19 all the way through to uh, US 19. So we can discuss that later. Thank you. And thanks again, Vice Mayor Carr. Thank you. I'd just like to remind everyone that uh, this uh, phase one project is part of the stormwater action plan. And uh, if you all remember, we purchased uh, land in order to build the uh, retention pond. Uh, Bob, do you have it? Uh, I don't know if, uh, if you remember uh, the, uh, the history behind that. This is the uh, action plan that you are developed for us uh, a few years ago. Yes, yes, that's right, and that's correct. We did purchase that property to for this project for this phase. Okay, um, we are now going to the uh, public comments. Ms. Manusus, any emails? No emails, Mayor. Mr. Jump, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would wish would wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand, and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. We need a motion. Uh, I just have a quick comment, Mayor. 
Sure, go ahead. Um, about the phase two of MIRS, um, and that's one of the items we're asking the state for um, that we approved as a board for state appropriations for this coming year. Uh, and also, Mark, I would like to just see if the, the county would be willing to, to help us out with part of this, too. Um, it's a connector route, and that's why I think the state will be interested in it. Um, so if we go to the county and the state and ask them uh, for some help on this, that we'll see if they throw us a, a little bit on their funding side. Uh, it's a long shot, I think, but at the same time, uh, being able to connect um, Alter 19 to US 19 um, and ultimately Florida Avenue to US 19 is a big, a big win, I think, for the county, too. So uh, maybe we could look at that as well for some additional funding to help that project move forward. Yes, we can, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm happy to approve, um, need a motion. approve this application. A uh, motion to approve. Second. A roll call, please. Mr. Vadigotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes. Next is item number 11, the award bid number 210001BJJ Tarpa Springs Gateway Monument Sign. This is the uh, rebid. Staff report, Mr. Lecours. That's Bob. I guess it's one of yours, too. We're bringing it back. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so I'm Bob Robertson, Project Administration Department Director. And uh, for this item, we're requesting that the board award a construction contract to Quality Neon Sign Company doing business as Harbinger Sign for the Gateway Monument Signs Project in the amount of $108,916. The project consists of construction and installation of six new monument signs to be situated at gateway locations within the city. Um, there are two board approved sign, sign styles that will be installed in locations shown in the backup memo on Alt 19, Tarpon Avenue, and US 19. The project is funded by the Penny Fund and came in under the project budget. The construction schedule allows for 200 days to final completion. And with that, I will stop for questions or comments. Um, thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, if I remember correctly, the uh, landscaping was going to be done in house. That's correct. So the only thing they're going to do is just install the uh, the signs, right? The base and the sign. Yep, that's right. This contract is for signs only. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr, any comments? Uh, I'm just happy to see a reduction um, from the initial bid. Um, There's a significant reduction when they went out to rebid. So thanks, thank you staff for going for rebid on that one. Commission Donovan, any comments? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate staff's effort on this, and I was happy to see the reduction. I'm respectfully going to vote no on this, just because when we originally did these designs, I voted no because I just kind of wanted the original signs. I just didn't think it was worth the cost. Um, so again, I'm going to vote no on this, but I don't see any problems with the bid itself. Okay. Commissioner Tikiotis, any comments, questions? Actually, I'm in a hard spot right now. What was the um, original bid on this, the low bid that was disqualified? 92,000. Yeah, 90 something thousand, yes. And, and, what was, and what was the next higher one? 183,000. Okay, and so this is at about 106, if I remember right? Eight, I think. Yeah. How much? 108. 108. 108, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. If it was up around 100, and uh, if we were back up to where we were on the first bid, I'd, I'd have an issue with that, so. Okay, thank you, Mayor, that's it. Thank you, public comments, Ms. Manusas? No emails, Mayor. Okay, Mr. Jump, anyone wishing to speak? If anyone would wish to speak, please raise your hand. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Okay, thank you. We need a, we need a motion. Motion to approve. Uh, I'll second that. And roll call. Mr. Batagotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? No. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes. The item 12A and 12B will be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. So item number 12 is the uh, HVAC repair and maintenance reject all bids for bid number 200159BAM HVAC repair and maintenance contract. Mr. Lequeris, staff report. 
Yes, before Tom Function gives the report, as you remember those who were on the board last year, this was a this was an item that uh, there was a lot of discussion on. Um, so we took that discussion from last year and uh, put it into our efforts this year. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tom to talk about the process and the reasons for the, the recommendation and to assure you that um, um, we put in one of the items that the board was requesting for the smaller bid orders um, that we did consider that and that is in this process. So I'll turn it over to Tom to, to talk about uh, what went on this year with the bids and why we're recommending what we recommend. Good evening, everybody. Tom Funchman, Public Works Director. Uh, I know as uh, the last couple of years, the air conditioning has been a, uh, a very famous uh, conversation here. Uh, so we had gone out with the concern, of course, uh, possible hiring some local uh, contractors or vendors to do our air conditioning work. Uh, our conditioning work is, uh, is extremely uh, complicated. So uh, we put the bid out with those opportunities. And of course, no one locally bid. Uh, there was one company that did bid a, a bit lower than the uh, contract we're asking you to approve about $10 an hour lower uh, for their tech. Uh, but as I put the numbers together and look at the management side of it over here, the, uh, those costs are actually were much higher than going back to the original contract um, and for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the familiarity of the equipment. Uh, should we bring another contractor in? Uh, yes, the rates are a little bit lower, but uh, I'd have to use existing personnel to escort them around the city. Uh, that's one of the main reasons. Uh, you get familiar with the equipment, get familiar with the controls, the locations. Uh, so it would take quite a bit of city time. The other part of this is also the control system for the for the uh, uh, building control management system. We have four buildings, City Hall, the library, our recreation center, and the public safety building. They're on a control system. That uh, train itself does uh, is upgrading the existing system and they control it. Uh, should we have a, an issue with one of those systems, uh, the new contractor would not be familiar with it. Uh, you could have issues either mechanically or uh, uh, control system issue. Uh, if they came in and found out the issue was separate, you'd have to again call a second contractor to come in, check out the control system, and then coordinate those those type of repairs. Uh, with train being on board, it's a one tech. They're cross-trained on, the, on both mechanical and the technical side of it. So again, it saves us a lot of time and, and, and in the long run saves us quite a bit of money. Uh, along with this contract, it's a uh, 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 opportunities for other small uh, businesses here in the city to bid on smaller units. There's about 24 units uh, that are about two and a half to three ton. And depending on the time and the use, uh, those units will be available if they go down and uh, need replacing, be available to our local vendors. Um, since this is a, a, a non-exclusive contract that gives us the opportunity to actually do on any conditioners, but the most, uh, the smaller ones and the, and the more uh, convenient ones, we could definitely put them out to bid should time and again, use dictate uh, uh, that possibility. Thank you, thank you, Tom. No problem. I'm open for questions. Uh, and I'm glad that we uh, decided to give the opportunity to Tarper Springs companies to bid. Uh, but, you know, for the big, uh, pro uh, big systems that we have, uh, they're very complex. Uh, was the last year that uh, uh, the building, may, uh, excuse me, the building director took us up there and shows the uh, the complex system that it's there. So I think it's it's very wise to have somebody who knows the system very well, uh, and uh, in the long run will be uh, more economical. But uh, I'm very glad that uh, our local businesses are going to have the opportunity to uh, to bid on the, and to work on the 24 units, small units that we have. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, I just want to echo some of the things the mayor just said. Um, thank you to staff to hearing us out from the last time um, we talked about this. I'm excited to, to have, obviously AC is an important thing for all of us. Um, so thanks, thanks again for what you guys have done. No problem. You're welcome. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, not to sound redundant, but uh, I think the board did the right thing when we decided to look into this uh, and I appreciate staff's effort on it, but I understand where we're at. Good, I appreciate it. Commissioner Tikiotis? Same way, Mayor. Uh, keep it local anytime we can. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we're going to go to public comments, uh, Ms. Manusas. Any emails? No emails were received, Mayor. Mr. Jeb, do we have anyone that is wishing to speak on the item of 12A and 12B? 
If you would Hi. like to speak on these items, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. Anyway. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. So. All right, hold on. Well, thank you. I need a motion to uh, approve item number 12, which is the uh, HVAC repair and maintenance reject all bits for bid number 200159BAM H HVAC repair and maintenance contract. Move to approve. Second. And roll call. Mr. Batagiotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahousas? Yes. Uh, now we need a motion to approve the uh, item number 12B, which is the award file number 210037AM, <laughs> Euralize in U.S. Communities Purchasing Alliance contract number 15JLP023. So moved. Second. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Yes. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Meryl Hoosis? Yes. That takes us down to the item uh, number 13, which is the extension of uh, business recovery program. Staff report, Mr. LeCourse. Uh Karen Lemons, could, do you want to just start off and go over this again, and then, then I'll follow up with uh, an item. Yes. Um, again, the business recovery program was started back in May um, when the pandemic first hit. We allowed businesses to expand their outdoor dining onto uh, nearby parking lots and um, public rights of way. And we allowed um, all of our businesses to expand by putting uh, additional signage and outdoor display of merchandise um, to help them advertise their businesses. And so for several months now, um, the board has been extending that um, month to month. Um, in August, uh, Hibiscus Street was um, reopened. And since then in September, the governor did declare uh, phase three reopening, which um, has opened now full capacity for our restaurants and our businesses. Um, however, in talking with um, a lot of our businesses, the um, the ability to continue to display um, either merchandise or their additional signage outside and also the um, ability to maintain their outdoor tables and chairs um, is still very beneficial to them. Um, people are still uh, being somewhat wary of venturing out and um, you know we're getting into season. So um, we would like to continue to extend that um, for another month until um, Sunday, November 15th. Thank you, Ms. Lemons. You're welcome. And just to add to that, I think we're coming to the time where we need to talk and get the board input on, you know, how long we're going to extend this. I'd like to give enough time um, to the businesses um, to notify them um, when this is coming to an end. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with a phase three, if it's going to cause commotion and go backwards or what, but we're getting to that point. Another factor we need to remember is, and it's not a subject to this, but we'll be talking about it. And I'll, I'll be sending you tomorrow a notice we're putting out. If you remember, um, the A-frame sign ordinance um, goes into effect in January. So that's a situation that's going to be, you know, occurring and it kind of kind of could go into this situation of some extended thing. So we're, we're, we're getting to a point where we may have to talk about how long we're going to continue this um, and maybe it'll, and uh, so we give the business enough time that this is going to continue another 30 days, maybe another 60 days or so I just like a little bit of discussion to see where the board is at on uh, continuing this item. Mr. Likuris, I don't know if you received any complaints, or, but I, I haven't received any complaints, just compliments. And uh, uh, the business people are very, very happy that we still have that. And they're still suffering from the uh, economic uh, uh, difficulties due to the uh, coronavirus. I believe we should keep, you know, should continue that, this program for another month. Uh, I'd like to hear from my fellow commissioners. So, uh, Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, I have no problem extending this um, 
further for the for the um sorry for the businesses here locally. Um, I'm fine extending it to the end of the year as well. I don't think we're going to see any reprieve anytime soon. So, um, and then we can evaluate January, February. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, I absolutely think we should extend this. Um, I, I'm I'm happy to extend it for for longer. Um, I guess you know we can cross that bridge when we come to it if we want in November. But um, I'm all for extending this. And in terms of the A-frame signs. Um, I would definitely want to consider either postponing that or pushing that back to a later date, just because that's going to be, you know, at, at the end of the December, we're going to say, Hey, Merry Christmas, by the way, um, with everything going on, you're trying to recover, spend 300 bucks on a new A-frame sign. So that, that is something that I would support pushing back. Um, but again, I understand if that needs to be a separate item later on. Hello? Hi. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just drill down a little bit more on this thing before we start uh, deciding these things. Are we violating any ordinances by this, uh, you know, this outside display? No, that not by the action you're taking to extend it. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, absent anything. If there wasn't a COVID thing, would there be any, would we be violating any of our ordinances? Yes. Okay. Uh, the A-frame signs, uh, that date, that, that rollout date, is that tied to the ordinance? Yes. Okay. My point is at some point, this emergency order is going to go away altogether. Would I assume that that's going to be correct? Yes. Okay. So my feeling is at some point when that happens, which I doubt it's going to be next year, um, I, I I, I don't want to extend it in violating our own codes outside any kind of an executive order, I guess is what I'm getting at. So if we're looking for a natural um, time frame as far as uh, ending this, I would think that we should tie it to when the um, emergency order ends. I guess that would be by Governor DeSantis. Would that be correct? Uh, City Attorney Trask is nodding his head, so I, I, I'm going to take that. Um, if I could get some comments from the commission, maybe that would be the good uh, ending point that, that we could we could share that with our businesses if, uh, if that would be acceptable. I, I don't think we can violate our ordinances outside of an, an emergency order, I guess is what I'm getting at. I mean, I guess we could, but that's being lawless, I think. Well, this item here is to extend it for another month. I, I know, Mayor, but the city manager was asking for some input as far as giving the, the businesses information of when they should expect that these um, um, courtesies uh, are going to end. And I'm just trying to pin it down rather than sending a message that we may be here and uh, till the end of the year, which may not be the case. And all I'm saying is from a practical perspective, I would think that the appropriate time would be when the emergency order uh, is rescinded and we're getting back to normal. And I don't think any of us want to violate our own city ordinances in that regard. Well, let's, let's ask the uh, city attorney for uh, legal advice. Um, Mr. Trask, we, do we have the... Uh, 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 do we have the right to do that as a uh, local government? You can tie your local state of emergency to um, the governor's uh, executive order. The answer is correct. Yes, you can do that. Okay. But what about if the governor says that, uh, uh, or he does not extend his, um, uh, his executive, executive order? Can we as a government continue, uh, to continue that? As a local government, can we continue that? You do have home rule powers, but they're all based upon um, the um, the direction of where the way Pinellas County is um, treating the local state of emergency. So um, I, I would say to you, you would not want to um, extend the local state of emergency past what the governor's order says or Pinellas County's order says. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis, do you have any other comments? No, oh, that was it. It's just trying to help the city manager uh, provide some information to the businesses. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. 
Um, any other uh, commissioner wants, wants to uh, comment on that? I mean, I, I would just say that I, I want to be as lenient and friendly to businesses as, as long as we can here. I mean, I don't know how it's all going to shake out with the emergency orders. I guess, you know, we got to take that, you know, with a grain of salt whenever the, you know, governor renews his and doesn't renew his. I mean, but just overall, if we're talking about, you know, sending messages, I, I would like to see it be as friendly as it possibly can be to businesses for a long time. Because even when the emergency is technically done, businesses are still going to be in recovery. Okay. Vice Mayor, do you want to comment on that? Um, I, I really don't have any other comments. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we go to public comments. Ms. Manusis, any emails? Uh, no emails were received, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone that is wishing to speak? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. We do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The chair will obtain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Can I just clarify this is just till the November 15th date? Yes, it's for a month. Yes. Mr. Batagiotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alhusis? Yes. Mayor, uh, point of order, can I ask a question on that? Um, the November 15th date, clarification on that? We just voted on November 15th. Is that good timing since the next meeting is November 17th? Uh, see, Major LaCourse. We'd have to, we probably have to address it. We'd have to address it at the commission meeting the week before that on the 9th. The ninth. Ninth or eighth. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, next is item of 14, 500 East Oakwood. Staff report. Yes, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, Kevin Powell has been working with me on this item. This is an item that's went before the board. We all know, and those of you who have seen it, um, this is a dilapidated building. Um, in the Union Academy neighborhood. Um, the residents have a lot of concerns about it because of their the historical significance. Um, you as a board, the last time you talked about this, asked us to go out there in the community and meet with the residents and, and get their concerns. You heard those concerns when we had the issue on a commission meeting. So what we're recommending, obviously the biggest concern of, of Mr. Powell and of course us in public safety is the safety of that building. Um, we're lucky with no storms, but that building is not a safe structure and it needs to come down. Um, what we're recommending to the board is to go forward with not a, a demolition, um, but has aptly, as Kevin Powell can put it, a disassembly of the building um, where we would where we would take the building apart um, with the hope of keeping um, what is good within the building, um, catalog it, keep it um, for a later time when there's a decision of the board of, of what we're gonna do with the property. So it accomplishes the purpose, it gets it down. It also preserves the materials that we find um, that are good in the building for, again, whatever we're gonna do, create a monument, um, you know, try to rebuild the structure anything we do we'll have that material we've got the time uh, to make those decisions on it and we recognize what the community um, told us about the significance um, we had them out there they know the condition of the building and uh, uh, again I'll turn it over to Kevin if you got anything to add to it and uh, anything to add to what I've said about um, obviously it'll be a little costly than taking a bulldozer and demolition and putting through it but I think the value of this building and the property to the neighborhood would be worth worth that extra cost. Um, um, and again, Kevin Powell and uh, Tom Function will be involved in this process of uh, of taking the building down with the contractor. Um, usually, you know, we piggyback on the Pinellas County contract, um, the demolition contract. We just got to make sure they'll do the demolition in this disassembly way. Kevin, you have to, anything to add since it was your concept that you came up with on this? 
Yes, thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, good evening, Mayor Commissioners, Kevin Powell, Building Development Department Director. Um, you know, understanding the historic significance of, the, of this building within the community kind of got me thinking, what can we do to try to save it and preserve as much as we can? I think the cost to try to rebuild what is there is going to be astronomical. And I don't think it's a good look for the city to come through with a bulldozer and push this building over. So in thinking about it, you know, why don't we look at uh, disassembling, as Mr. LaCour said, and uh, maintaining that material until we know what we can do. I did have a conversation today with, with Mrs. Dabbs and explained it to her and, and she, she did like the idea. That way we were not officially tearing the building down, but it gives a commission time to decide how they want to move forward on it. Uh, you know, the cost of it's probably going to be uh, close to double as to what it would be to just come in and, and tear it down and put it in a dumpster and haul it away. But I think the significant uh, value of the structure to the community, um, you know, looking at say $10,000 to tear it down and maybe a roughly up to 20,000 to um, manually take it down and, and store this material uh, versus engineering, shoring, and then deciding what we want to do. I don't think the cost difference is going to be that much. Um, so I know Tom did reach out to the contractor today. Um, I don't believe he's heard anything back from them yet for a price, but um, I think it's just a, a viable option uh, for the community. Um, pending any questions, I'm, I'm here. Um, Mr. Powell, thank you for uh, the advice and for uh, uh, you know, looking at the building very close. We know that uh, the, uh, the building has a historical significance. And uh, I agree with you, uh, recommendation to uh, disassemble and save uh, all the usable parts for uh, later day. But uh, I would like to ask uh, for consensus of uh, my fellow commissioners to schedule these uh, to rebuild this building uh, next year to preserve the history of the Union Academy, which is so important to Harper Springs. So, uh, Mr. Powell, thank you very much. You. Uh, with that, I would like to go to uh, Vice Mayor Carr and uh, to keep in mind that uh, I would like to see this building to be scheduled to rebuild the next year. Uh, Mayor, I can't support that tonight. Um, I appreciate your effort, um, but to me, we have a building that's a couple blocks over with the community center. Um, the senior center is being put in that as well. Uh, as of now, I'm not sure. I believe there's not a need for another building two blocks over that's going to be rather small footprint and then another area for maintenance. Um, to me, I think it makes sense to sell the property to get it back on the tax rolls or we could look at making a, um, some type of maybe small park for the neighborhood as well. Um, but building a new building there just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then from tearing it down, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot. I was out there with staff looking at the different pieces of wood. Um, there's a lot of this building is termite ridden. Um, the roof is obviously metal, so that's not gonna uh, rot away, but um, this building has not been taken care of for years. So um, do I think the city owes it, owes a community to put some type of honorary plaque, um, I guess memorializing the building, a little bit of the history, absolutely. Um, but to, to rebuild it next year, I don't think that's the best choice to make. Um, and also what the building would be used for. Um, so with that, that's, that's where I stand tonight. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I did have a question um, for Mr. Powell, I guess. Just how much material do you think is salvageable, you know, if we take it apart piece by piece? Because I, I, I have been by there a couple times, and it just doesn't look to me like there would be much, um, much to save. You might get maybe a quarter to a third of the building. The other thing you got to look at is the dimensional lumber that's in there. I mean, you have true two by fours and that type of material that's in there that if you're going to replicate or try to, to do things, it may be a little difficult in refurbishing it now. So, um, yeah, you might have about a quarter to a third of the, of the building um, of, of usable material. Um, but, you know, to go into 
doing something in the future and having material available for that building, if the commission so chooses would, you know, be an, I think a nice gesture to the community. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a happy medium. Um, I don't know, you know, for sure in the future what we could use it for, whether it be rebuilding it or, you know, putting it in a, one of our cultural centers or one of our museums or city hall, even, um, I think, you know, it's definitely a building worth respecting and I can appreciate the significance of the history of it. Um, so I, I think this is the, the right uh, route and I appreciate staff's effort. Um, as far as committing tonight to rebuild the, bu the building in the future, there's just too many questions that I would have to have answered. You know, I don't want to commit to build something that I don't know the cost of. Um, I don't want to commit to build something where I don't know if it's going to be staffed. I don't know what the function of it's going to be, what the usage of it's going to be. Um, so I guess that, that's my question um, just for the future is that, you know, I'm, I'm open to hearing any options, but I'm not going to commit to rebuilding anything that I don't know the cost of, or I guess the function of. Thank you, Commissioner Vaticuris. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, would you be amenable to uh, uh, including in the motion to uh, discussing it during next year's CIP budget? Not committing to anything other than just discussing it. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, if we want to go ahead and discuss it, I'm, I'm all ears. I just, I would okay. love the, the cost and the function. I think that would be a good message to the uh, Union Academy neighborhood that we're just not going to take it away and, and people aren't going to see it again. Um, Mr. Powell, that's excellent work on your part. Thank you for that stinking out of the box. And I very much appreciate that. And I think the uh, neighborhood would very be very appreciative as well. And if um, Ms. Dabbs, um, I'm sure she's she's when she's happy, the world's happy. I can tell you that. So she's a very nice lady. Um, what, do we do we know where we're going to store it yet? I think we'll have to get with Tom Function on that and see what areas he has available for. We've kind of discussed it a little bit, but not fully until we know the direction that the commission wants to go. Okay. And uh, the mayor alluded to maybe discussing it next year during the uh, CIP, which I'm, I would be supportive of that. Um, where would we would we store at, uh, the material? And by the way, the material once it's disassembled, it's going to be a lot more compact than what you see right now as it's standing. So, um, would it be um, someplace that might be weather tight so it doesn't f further deteriorate from the weather? Yeah, I'm not sure what Tom has. He, he should be on, and uh, he may have a location for it. But, but I'm sure we would do it that way. There's no sense keeping it if we're going to let it be further uh, destroyed. So I think that would be our goal to do, and would be yeah. Tom's goal. Yeah, we like definitely definitely got to get a water type. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and there's a couple options either the uh, the old PD behind City Hall, depending on how much material is left over, and or there's even a possibility of a shipping container. You could also rent one of those or purchase one of those for like cheap and, and put that away there. Actually, even leave it on site if you want to lock it up and the material will be there all the time. So, again, it's going to be dependent on how much comes out of the building, too. So, um, let, let me ask you, uh, you mentioned the old PD, uh, the old classrooms, I would suspect. Is that right, City Manager of the course, the old classrooms we're talking about uh, across from the, uh, the city clerk's office, the old cafeteria? Was that where you're talking about, Tom? Yeah, yes. I call it the old PD. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We repaired that a number of years ago. So, I had some storage areas in the back that we could utilize. Um, is that area going to be tenant anytime soon? Uh, no, sir. No, it was done where we rebuilt that uh, about five years ago. Uh, completely, we did the interior and it's all to climate control. Okay, there's two things. One, I, I would I would recommend not for any reason other than to at this point to preserve the wood. Once it's disassembled, maybe we can find a, a fumigator to um, to fumigate it to kill the termites especially if we're going to store it indoors somewhere so we don't bring the termites back into a building that we tented five years ago so I, I that's the second part of that to be smart about it and i very much appreciate trying to store it indoors so um mayor when we get to the point um what i'd like to do is is uh consider a motion to um approve the uh, the uh the disassembly of the building with the um, uh, provision that it be brought back uh, to the fiscal year 22 uh, CIP uh, budget for further discussion for rebuilding. Uh, yes, we're gonna to go to uh, public comments first. Again. Yes, I just wanted to suggest but, uh, that. Uh, again, I'd like to comment that uh, the, the residents of, uh, they like to see this uh, structure to be rebuilt 
uh, to preserve the history of the uh, Union Academy. It's very, very important to Tarpur Springs, so we need yeah. to keep that in mind. Uh, with that, I'd like to go to the public comments. Uh, Mrs. Jacobs, have we received any emails? No emails were received, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone uh, wishing to speak on this item? If you would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do have a raised hand at this time, sir. If you could please state your name and address for the record. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, my, my name is Andy Dabb, Dabb, and I would like, I would to, like thank to thank Mr. I would like to would thank like Mr. To Powell thank for all of his work, work, and I do I agree do with his recommendation because, because the history is very, very important, 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 important to this neighborhood, and I would like to see it given more thought perhaps next year as what can be done with it. Thank you, Ms. Dabbs. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mr. Jump, do we have anybody else? Anyone else would like to speak? Please raise your hand. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The chair will detain a motion. Uh, move to uh, approve the uh, disassembly for rebuilding the future and to schedule a discussion concerning rebuilding the building uh, during the fiscal year 2022 CIP. Can I see a clarification? That's just to uh, discuss it, right? Just to discuss it. That I think that's what Commissioner Donovan agreed to. Second, then. Commissioner Roll call. Yes, roll call. Commissioner Batagiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahousis? Yes. Okay, we're now going to the ordinance of resolutions. Item number 15 is the resolution 2020-64, name in a portion of uh, previously undeveloped road connecting Mears Boulevard and Mango Street. City Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Mayor, Commissioners, Resolution 2020-64, Resolution of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, naming that portion of previously undeveloped roadway connecting Mears Boulevard and Mango Street between Safford Avenue and Distin Avenue and providing an effective date. That was a reading of Resolution 2020-64 by title only. Thank you. Mr. Likers, do you have a staff report for us? Uh, yes, I want to thank uh, Renee Vincent for putting this together for me. Again, this is a staff report. We, we, it's come time that we need to make a decision. This is a recommendation, but obviously we're open to um, the wishes of the board. So Renee would just go ahead and quickly go through um, what we've done so far on this. And I, I know we have some information here from one of the commissioners and stuff. So we just go over our resolution and uh, what our obligation is to, to name the roads. Uh, certainly. So this is resolution 2020-64. Um, we, um, as part of the uh, research um, for this, which is included in all the whereas clauses, um, our naming authority comes under Article 10 of the Code of Ordinances, so uh, that's the guiding uh, documents that was used to develop the resolution. Um, one of the things that we have to, to do is to, um, we have to provide a name for the, the unnamed roadway portion. Um, if you recall, there was a previous board discussion uh, regarding options around this. Um, subsequent to that, we uh, performed the historical research, and specifically with the um, uh, with respect to the existing Mango Street name, um, that does first appear on the 1917 map of the town of Tarpon Springs, um, as well as the 1944 official zoning map and then the 1952 plat of Toby Acres. So there's some historical significance to the existing Mango Street name on that portion of that ro of the roadway. Um, also uh, mentioned in the whereas clauses, again, is the recognition to um, 
Dr. Diamandis and his contributions to um, ensuring you know that this this beer's mango quarter uh, you know come to fruition um, and provide a uninterrupted east-west roadway from U.S. 19 uh, to Florida Avenue, and especially serving as an emergency um, evacuation roadway. Um, so with that, what is proposed um, is that the uh, unroad, unnamed road segment would be officially known as Mears Boulevard East. Uh, the existing roadway segment, now known as Mango Street, will retain its name as Mango Street. And then in recognition of uh, the efforts of Dr. Diamandis through the years, um, that there would be an honorary uh, roadway naming or memorial uh, plaque or monument signage. So attachment A shows the proposed roadway naming construct. And then attachment B shows the, um, the honorary memorial options uh, for roadway signage. And then on page five of the uh, agenda backup, you have a letter of support uh, to retain Mango Street as a name, uh, as an official roadway name um, from uh, Mount Moriah African, Meth uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church. And then the last, um, attach or last page of the attachment or the agenda backup is um, two mock-ups of a potential, if you were going to make the, the roadway name be Mears Boulevard all the way through, and then showing Mango Street as either an honorary or a historical uh, signage below that, and that was uh, added at the request of Commissioner Carr. So um, I'll let him uh, discuss that. So that's the staff overview, um, and uh, as the resolution reads now. Ms. Vincent, thank you. I uh, support the resolution. It's exactly how uh, I would like it to be. Thank you very, very much. Uh, in the last meeting, I, uh, I stated that uh, we need to get the input and the uh, recommendation for, uh, from the residents. And uh, all the residents are in favor to keep the uh, Mango Street name as it is. It's very important to the neighborhood. So we, uh, I would like to keep it as you have it on uh, resolution from distant to years 19 to keep it the way it is. And of course, the new street, the, the new portion of the road to be called Mears. And I also support uh, to honor Dr. Jamandus and his in memory to place either a monument or some kind of a sign to, uh, to honor Dr. Jamandus. Uh, he was a terrific person, Dr. D. Uh, he served uh, the community very, very well. And uh, I like to say that he was a very good friend of my dad. So uh, we missed him. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I have a little bit of different of a view on this one. Uh, first, I, I want to say I do support um, putting some type of honorary um, road name for Dr. D on the new extension. Um, but in my opinion, and based on talking to other residents throughout Tarpon Springs, uh, I really don't think it makes sense um, to have two different names on this road. I think it should be Mears from Ultra 19 to US 19 or it should be Mango from US 19 to Alternate 19. Um, to have the name change in the middle of this section without a major road um, just doesn't make sense. Um, and to me, I, I believe Mears should be all the way through. I think we have a good example already in Tarpon Springs. Tarpon Springs used to have a Lake Boulevard or Lake Drive uh, that ran from Spring Bayou out to US 19. Um, and Martin Luther King uh, Boulevard was renamed or Martin Luther King Drive was renamed. Um, it could have stopped at alternate 19, but it didn't. It continued all the way down to Spring Boulevard, uh, which in my opinion makes sense that it continues all the way through. Um, so the two items that I would like to see is, I would like to either see Mears stop at alternate 19 and Mango start there. But I think ultimately the best choice is to bring Mears all the way to US 19. And then you can see in your backup that you could keep the Mango Street as an honorary street name to recognize the history of Tarpon Springs in that area. And as a reminder too, there's two other Mango streets that are in this area or Mango names. There's a Mango Circle and there's also a Mango Loop uh, that come out onto this road as well. So in my opinion, it should be Mears. And then my second option would be Mango um, from Ultra 19 to US 19. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. 
Uh, yeah, thank you to the board and staff for your work on this. Um, I'll start uh, with Dr. Diamandis. Uh, never had the opportunity to meet him. I've heard you know great things uh, about him and his family and the community. Um, so I'm I'm happy to do an uh, you know an honorable uh, or an honorary memorial sign. Um, I'd prefer it to be one of you know if you go to um, slide four or page four. I'd prefer it to be one of the uh, the standalone signs. Like in this example, it says Nolan Olson Memorial Highway or the Master Sergeant Sean T. Hannon Memorial Highway. I don't really like um, any names underneath the actual street signs, like on our attachment B example, where it has North Ave and then you know mentions a Don Sykes. I, I I just think that's a little bit confusing when you look up at the sign um, and it's a little bit cluttered. So I do support uh, the honorary sign. I'd like it to be um, a standalone sign on both sides, maybe facing opposite ways, um, or or a memorial. It doesn't have to be necessarily one of those, you know, um, crude kind of highway signs. It could be something more elegant. I'm I'm fine with that as well. Um, I don't think it's I, I don't see any issue um, with going with what staff proposed in terms of Mango Street retaining its name and then Mango. Um, being you know extended to mango east but then stopping or sorry mirrors being extended to mirrors east and then stopping um with what mango street is on, on attachment a there um but overall i mean uh, as far as commissioner or sorry as, as far as vice mayor Carr's uh comments i guess if i had to choose a second option my second option would be the preference of extending mango street all the way um but overall uh, I support uh, the option that the mayor suggested. Thank you. Commissioner Tiki Oetis. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Um, Commissioner Donovan, you're talking about the blue star sign for Dr. Diamandis? The yeah, brass either, exactly. Either that one or the one on the far the far left. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. Uh, keep it off the street signs and things of that nature. So, um, and, and that may be an opportunity that we could do that as part of the other historic signs as well and just kind of hold it somewhere until we get ready for it. Um, um, I think the naming uh, convention where you've got one street and then it breaks off into another street is quite common for historic towns. Tarpon Springs is a historic town. Um, as Ms. Vincent said that uh, Mango Street shown on the map from 1917. That's good enough for me. And um, I'd like to keep it as it is with um, uh, Mears East up to Distin, I believe, and then from Distin out to US 19 as uh, Mears, uh, I'm sorry, Mango Mango Street. Mango Avenue, Mango, um, I'm sorry, Mango Street, Ms. Vincent? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we go to public comments. Uh... Ms. Manusis, any no emails? emails? No emails, ma'am. Well, thank you. Mr. Jump, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do have a raised hand, sir. Thank you. If you can state your name and address for the record. We have a phone caller with 727 ending in 809. Um, you are um, allowed in to talk, so you would have to unmute yourself. How do you unmute yourself, Mr. Jump? Can you tell him how to do that? I'll have to look it back up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gwen Dean Davis. I live at 519 East Morgan Street here in Tarpon Springs. I was born here 73 years ago. And uh, I would like to say that uh, in reference to Mr. Carr's comment about separating the street 
and the naming of Dr. King. Uh, I don't know if he remember or not, but Dr. King Street stopped at US 19 because the residents on the east side of US 19 did not want that name. And I feel that we need to keep this part in our community as Mango. It has history to it. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jeff, do we have anybody else wishing to speak? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll let the next person in. My, my, my name is Annie Dabbs. I reside at 803 South Distance. And I would like to see that the name Mango Street remain the same because of his his historical significance and importance to this neighborhood. And as um, I heard, and I do know, because I remember when Lake Street, um, when Dr. King was Lake Street and it was changed and it only went to US 19, and the residents did not want Martin Luther King over there. So we, the residents of this neighborhood, would like to see that Mango Street remain Mango Street and keep its history. I believe that all the history in Toppen Springs is important. Everybody's history. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dabbs. I'll allow the next person in to talk. Thank you. If you would state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Audrey Merrick, 517 East Boyer Street. And I would like to have the name uh, leave it as it is. It is part of Union Academy history and we don't have a lot of anything left in our community, and that would be a blessing to keep it as is, because other uh, neighborhoods do have a lot of history. We don't have it. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we do not have any other raised hands, sir. Okay, well, thank you. And it's back to us. The chair will detain the motion. Hey, I have a point of order on this. Um, Ms. Vincent, how would you like, it, is it just to approve resolution uh, as it's written in the title? Uh, that would That's what I would be asking for. Um, I realized that I did leave the, um, how we do the honorary, you know, recognition of Dr. Diamandis kind of open. So if, if the board wishes to make a motion that, you know, clarifies that it you know, should be a freestanding sign and not a roadway name sign, it, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. Uh, Mayor, I move to approve resolution 2020-64, naming a portion of previously undeveloped roadway connecting Mears Boulevard and Mango Street as the resolution is written and also to, uh, make the sign commemorating a uh, Dr. Diamandis a uh, fixed freestanding sign. Second. I'm sorry, did I hear a second? Yes, second. Oh, thank you. And roll call, please. Mr. Vaticotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? No. Mayor Alahousis? Yes. Okay, next is item number 16, resolution 2020-62. Changes in fees for golf, uh, golf course division. See that attorney, if you please read the resolution. This is resolution 2020-62, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Turpin Springs, Florida, authorizing changes in the fees utilized by the golf course division of the Public Services Department, including changes to daily fees and annual membership fees and providing for an effective date here, Rob. 
There was a reading of resolution I six title only. Thank you. Mr. Likuris, do you have any new information from the last discussion? Uh, Turner Paul, do you have any information, any further information on this? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director, and also joining us online is Howard Hunt, the golf course manager. I'm gonna ask him to give you a brief overview of what's proposed. But first, I just wanna mention the golf course is an enterprise fund and fees are our source of income. Um, it's been several years since we've made changes to the fees. And um, this item proposes to address two things. One, it'll provide additional discount to residents. And we also wanna modify our rates with some small increases in certain areas that are low compared to market. Uh, the rates are proposed to take effect on January 1. And I'll ask Howard Hunt to uh, give you a little bit more detail. Thank you, Paul. Uh, glad to be with you this evening. So as Paul said, we are uh, proposing a few increases, small increases in our, in our fees and rates. Um, first, let me start by saying uh, we have been offering a uh, summer discount card to our Tropical Springs residents over the last couple of years. And with everything that's been going on with the uh, pandemic and whatnot, we would like to extend that to our uh, residents in Tarpa Springs year round. So starting January 1, we would like to have uh, the Tarpa Springs residents get a $3 discount and the discount card would be free of charge uh, for the entire year. So that would include peak season, French season, and summer season. Our increases are in membership, as Paul said, we're uh, proposing a 9% increase in our membership prices, which I think is very minimal. Um, it will be less than $10 a month to any membership rates. Um, and that will uh, take into effect January 1st. Uh, also, we are proposing a few uh, small increases of only a dollar to $3 and some of our Weekday lead rates, our twilight rates, and our super twilight rate. Um, these rates will keep us fiscally sound, I think, for the next year. And also, um, you know, gives the opportunity to uh, stay within uh, our area guidelines to keep us a great value in, in uh, Pinellas County. And that's uh, my proposal. Thank you. I'm not a golfer, but I would like to ask you is, are those prices compatible to the other golf courses in the area? Very compatible, Mayor. Uh, as a matter of fact, we will remain below our other area golf courses in not only our membership fees, but also our daily fees. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr, any comments or questions? No. Thank you, Howard. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I like golf, but golf doesn't like me. Uh, I've been finding out the hard way. Um, but uh, I just want to say, I, <laughs> I, I've been I've been to Tarpon, um, you know, probably about a dozen times now lately. And uh, I just I really want to say I appreciate Mr. Hunt and his staff there. They do a great job. Thank you, Commissioner Tikiotis. Thank you, Mayor. I don't golf. I used to golf, and my last round of golf was at Tarpon Springs uh, Golf Course. Um, that's because we didn't have rangers. <laughs> Do we have rangers now? <laughs> A lot of the old geezers wouldn't let us play through, but I guess I'm an old geezer now, so maybe uh, I should take up golf again. Um, I'm very proud of our golf course. I was city manager when we took it back and uh, made it a municipal golf course, took it out of the lease and, and made it an enterprise sons. Uh, enterprise fund. So y'all do a terrific job out there. I know there's been a couple of um, golf course managers and Mr. Hunt, I'm glad to see you. I, I've not seen you before, but I'm glad to recognize you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, public comments. Thank you very much. Ms. Manusas, any uh, emails? No emails were received, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Jump, do we have any uh, anyone's wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk.
And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion. So motion move. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Medicotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes. Next is item number uh, 17A, Eagle Creek Development, David Weekly Homes, the application 20-73, 20-104, uh, 687 Clusterman Road. This is the ordinance 2020-21, land use development to preservation. This is the second reading. Uh, Mr. Trenny, please read the ordinance. Yes, this is ordinance 2020-21, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for 2.39 acres, more or less, of real property located at 685 and 687 East Klosterman Road on the northeast corner of East Klosterman Road and South Distant Avenue, application 20-73. From the land use designation of RL, residential low, to land use designation P, preservation, providing for findings and providing an effective date. This was, the legal advertising was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on July 29, 2020, September 2nd, 2020. Thank you. Staff report, Mr. Licoris. I'll go ahead and jump in. Yes, uh, this please. is application 20-73 from David Weekly Homes. Uh, this is the second reading of a land use map amendment from residential low to preservation. Uh, this is associated with the uh, Eagle Creek uh, plan development uh, subdivision. Uh, there's been no, uh, I have no new information to enter into the record uh, between first and second reading and staff recommendation is to approve this on second reading. Thank you. I have no comments or questions. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr? I have no, nothing further. Commission Donovan? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Vaticuris. Uh, good evening, Ms. Terpani. I just want to say hi. I have no comments, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we go to uh, public comments. Ms. Manusis. Uh, no emails were received, Mayor. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The chair will detain a motion. We have Ms. Terrapani here. I don't know if she wants to speak, Mayor. Cindy Terrapani. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm just here to answer any questions. This was a pretty straightforward amendment, and the staff has covered all the um, items, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions to uh, Ms. Terrapani? We hear none. The chair will obtain a motion. Motion approved. Second. In roll call. Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. The next is item number 18A Habitat for Humanity for Pinellas County, of Pinellas County application 2080 Cypress Street Lot. The ordinance 2020 24 rezoning. This is a second reading, and this is a uh, quasi judicial. The city attorney will read the ordinance and it will explain the quasi judicial process. Thank you, Mayor. This is ordinance 2020 24, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida for 0 0.34 acres of property located on the north side of Cypress Street between North Levis Avenue and North Gross Avenue from R70A, single family residential district to R60, one and two family residential district, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. The legal advertising was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on September 2, 2020. I'll explain the quasi-judicial procedures. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. 
The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has met the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Um, I'd like to go ahead and swear in uh, Ms. Vincent. I believe that she'll be making a presentation. She's here. Here you are. All right. You, you raise your right hand, please. You swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You can go ahead and proceed. Thank you. This is application 20-80 um, from Habitat for Humanity for property located on Cypress Street between North Levis and North Gross Avenue. Uh, the proposal is to uh, rezone the property from R70A to R60. Uh, the purpose of this is to allow two single family lots to be created. Uh, again, this is second reading um, of the proposed uh, ordinance and there's no new information to enter into the record. Um, and staff recommendation uh, is to approve this uh, on second reading. Thank you. Any questions of Ms. Vincent? Don't see any. No. Okay. Is the applicant uh, present? Who would that be, Renee? Is that Mr. Rush? Yes. Okay, sir, I'm gonna have you raise your right hand and be sworn under oath. You swear the testimony you're about to give is gonna be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <laughs> okay, would you like to make a presentation to the commission? No, I just wanted to thank the commission and staff again for presenting this to us on behalf of Habitat for Humanity. And if everything goes well, we look forward to building two more houses and providing affordable housing within the city of Tarpon Springs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the commission? Uh, I don't have a question, but I would like to uh, comment to uh, Mr. Rush. Mr. Rush, this is a great program, and I want to thank you for providing the home to a family in Tarpon Springs. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Michelle, has there been any um, emails from the public received? No emails were received. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Jump, um, is there anyone in the audience that, uh, that wishes to speak on this item? If anyone would wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you, Mayor. It's back for the commission's consideration. Thank you. Uh, are there any uh, commission comments on this item? Hearing none, the chair will retain the motion. Motion to approve. Second. In roll call. Mr. Medicotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Next, we have uh, item 19A and also 19B. 19B is a quasi judicial. And these items are related, so we're going to be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. Uh, item number uh, 19A is Ramey Property, application 20-76, 20-110, 1606, and 1628 Dixie Highway, the ordinance 2020-25, annexation. This is a second reading. Um, Mr. Trask. Yes, Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and read Ordinance 2020-25 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing 0.42 acres more or less of real property located at 1606 Dixie Highway on the northeast corner of Dixie Highway and Beckett Way. And at 1628 Dixie Highway on the east side of Dixie Highway between Beckett Way and July Drive, application 20-76, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. Legal advertising is published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 2nd, 2020 and September 9th, 2020. I'll read the quasi-judicial hearing procedures again. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At the quasi-judicial hearing, it's not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and to apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria containing the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria 
establishing the code of ordinances in the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence of the hearing demonstrates the applicant has failed to meet the criteria establishing the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. So, Ms. Vincent, you've already been sworn in. You don't need to be sworn in again. Do you have a presentation that you would like to make on these matters? Uh, yes. Thank you. Again, this is application 20-76 and 20-110 uh, for property located at the northeast corner of Dixie Highway and Beckett Way. Uh, the, application are, are, the applications are for annexation and for rezoning uh, from the Pinellas County designation of R4 to the city of Tarpon Springs designation of R70. And the, the, um, if you recall from first readings, um, the applicant is annexing in in order to obtain um, city services. Uh, there's no new information for the, to be entered into the record um, between first and second reading and staff recommendation is to approve uh, on second reading, both the annexation and the rezoning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, any commission questions of Ms. Vincent? No. Don't, don't see any raised hands. Okay, is the applicant present? Hi there, we're here. Okay, Ms. Ken, um, I want you to raise your right hand. And I'm going to swear you're under oath. You swear the testimony I'm about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to add today? No. So if I understand this correctly, tonight was the second reading? That's correct. And when will the annexation be complete? Um, November it, 4th. It will, not, no, it will not take an effect until November the 4th, 2020. 2020. Um, November the 4th, after the election, then we'll be at. If the, if the commission goes ahead and approves the ordinances, the answer is yes. Do you have any presentation that you would like to make? No, sir, I don't really. I just had some questions about that. I was unclear as to when the annexation would go through. And um, is this our, our final reading tonight or is there another one yet uh, next month? This, this is it tonight. If the commission approves it, it'll be approved. Okay. okay. And Does then I can go forward with my impact fees and everything like that, correct? You can contact the city in the morning once it's approved and they'll be happy to, to, to help you. Okay. okay. Thank All you. Right. Does the commission have any questions of the applicant? No. no. Okay, thank you. So uh, Ms. Manousis, do we have any um, emails for this uh, no matter? Email. No okay. emails. Okay, Mr. Jump, is there anyone with raised hands in the audience that would like to speak on either one of these items? the annexation or um, the rezoning. If anyone would like to speak, speak, please raise your hand. We do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. It's back to the commission um, for consideration. I will need to read the second ordinance though, when you're ready. Uh, are there any uh, commission comments on this item? If not, the chair will entertain a motion for the owners 2020-25, the annexation. Motion approved. Second. And roll call, please. Ed Gittes? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lujus? Yes. The item number uh, 19B is the owners 2020-26, Rezoning, and this is the uh, quasi judicial. Yes, Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and read Ordinance 2020 26, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida for 0 0.42 acres, more or less, of real property located at 1606 Dixie Highway and 1628 Dixie Highway from Pinellas County, R4, 1, 2, and 3 family residential district, the City of Tarpon Springs, R70 one and two family residential district providing for fines and providing for an effective date. There's the second final reading of ordinance 2020-26 by title only. The legal advertising was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on September 2nd, 2020. This item has been discussed, so I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Mr. Matt Giotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alahusis. Yes. Next is item number 20, resolution 2020-65. Attorney, if you please read. Resolution 2020-65, resolution of Springs, Florida, 
ratifying Executive Order 2020-34 and extending the declaration of local state of emergency to October 6, 2020, and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the reading of Resolution 2020-65 by Title Only. Thank you. Mr. LeCourters, do you have any comments? I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Are there any commission comments on this item? I hear none. Uh, public comments, uh, Ms. Jacobs? No Excuse e me, excuse me, Ms. Manusas. No emails, Mayor. Sorry about that. That's okay. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone that are wishing to speak? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. And we do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Uh, we need a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call. <laughs> Mr. Vatagiotis? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Luzis? Yes. Next is item number 21, resolution 2020-25, the application 20-91, condition of use for a tourism home in WD1, 1145 Marina Drive, Mason. This is a quasi-judicial. Mr. Attorney, if you please read the resolution and explain the quasi-judicial process. Again. Thank you, Mayor. This, this is resolution 2020-55, a resolution of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, approving application number 20-91, requesting a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a tourist home at 1145 Marina Drive, located on the south side of Marina Drive in the WD-1 Waterfront Development District, Zoning District, providing for findings, providing for conditions, and providing an, for an effective date. That was the reading of resolution 2020-55 by title only. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the code of ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has met the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the code of ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Um, Ms. Fenson, you've already been sworn in. Um, so if you have a presentation to make, you can go ahead and proceed with that. Thank you. Um, for the purposes of this one, I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen as soon as I figure that out again. Okay. And can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So this is application 20-91 for property at 1145 Marina Drive. And this application and the next application are, are virtually identical. So I'll go into a little more depth on the first uh, go around, but the recommendations and, and recommendation, recommended conditions are, are virtually identical. Um, Enclote Isles is, a, is developed as a single family subdivision. Um, it's located uh, south of Anclote Road on the Anclote River. Um, it was developed back in the mid 1990s. Um, interestingly, this property actually is zoned WD1 and has a commercial recreation land use map category. And that goes back to uh, the 90s as well. And so when this property was actually developed, um, uh, the, the uh, the subdivision itself required um, an actual conditional use because single family is also a conditional use uh, in this particular zoning district. So the request before you this evening is for a conditional use uh, for a tourist home. Um, to to kind of go a little more into depth, the commercial recreation uh, future land use category as well as the WD1 zoning district, um, their intent really is to provide for tourist oriented development. Um, adjacent to the Anclote River. And I, I just want to kind of reiterate that the, the land use and zoning uh, played a very large factor into uh, the staff recommendation um, on both of these applications. Um, here's a uh, 
just a copy of the survey. Um, these are single family homes. They're not, you know, they're, they're not huge. They're, you know, 21, 2200 square foot homes. So nothing, um, you know, these aren't, you know, big party mansions or anything. Um, under the conditional use review criteria, um, we do find that it generally, if these are conditioned well and the applicant and the, the operators and owners of the of a tourist home operate them accordingly, that they can be compatible, um, you know, with with a neighborhood. And again, um, we are you know cognizant of the fact of the the history history of the land use and zoning on this property, um, and that th this is a tourist oriented area. Um, I do want to go into what. Well, let me, let me finish this. So you know in context with the conditions that we're recommending and there are an extensive set of conditions um, on the application or actually in, in the conditional use um, you know we think that these uh, you know can be compatible and so from the staff perspective we are recommending approval for the record i'm going to read the conditions directly from the from the resolution uh, that we are recommending um, the planning and zoning board did review this on September 21st and did recommend approval with one member voting in opposition. So for the record, staff recommendation is conditional use of, of is, is approval of the conditional use with the following conditions. The property shall remain a single family residence rented as a single, single living unit. The maximum occupancy shall be no more than two persons per bedroom plus two persons in one common area, not to exceed more than 10 persons total, whichever is less. A minimum of one off-street designated parking space and garage spaces um, are, uh, are included shall be provided for every three occupants. The property owner or designee um, shall be available uh, in a timely manner to respond to inspections, complaints, or other problems related to the tourist home use of the property. The duties of the responsible party are to be available by telephone at the posted phone number to handle any issues arising from the tourist home use if necessary, be willing and able to come to the tourist home following notification from an occupant, owner, law enforcement, or city official to address issues related to the tourist home use. Be authorized to receive service of any legal notice on behalf of the owner for any violations of city laws, ordinances, or terms of the conditional use, and otherwise regularly monitor the tourist home property to assure compliance with city laws, ordinances, and terms of the conditional use. The owner must provide an affidavit that the following has been posted on the back of or next to the main entrance door or on the refrigerator at the tourist home property, the name, address, and phone number of the tourist home responsible party, the maximum allowable occupancy of the tourist home in accordance with the terms of this conditional use, the maximum number of vehicles that can be parked in the designated parking area of the tourist home in accordance with the terms of the conditional use, the noise standard in accordance with terms of the conditional use, the days of trash pickup and recycling, the location of the nearest hospital. The building shall be maintained with the following, one smoke detector in each sleeping area, one smoke detector in the common hall between sleeping areas, smoke detector shall be of the 10 year lithium battery style, and a fire extinguisher shall be provided and shall have annual inspections. The applicant shall obtain and maintain a City of Tarpon Springs business tax rece receipt for the tourist home use at the time of application. The applicant shall provide the contact information for the responsible party as listed in conditions for herein and shall provide a, an affidavit attesting to compliance of the tourist home with the conditions uh, numbers five and six herein. If the business tax receipt lapses for a period of more than six months, a new, a new review of the conditional use will be required and the applicant shall comply with the requirements of the Dallas County Tax Collector and all other local and state requirements. So that is a lot of conditions. I realize that's a lot, but I wanted to read them into the record. Um, many of those conditions I um, borrowed, if you will, directly from the Pinellas County Code of Ordinances and how they regulate uh, short-term rentals. So um, we have received um, both letters in opposition as well as letters um, or, or emails in support and uh, you later on, uh, it directly as a result of both this and the next application, uh, we have received a petition uh, from 15 of 19 residents or homes, you know, homes in this particular subdivision, requesting that the property, the entire subdivision be rezoned um, and land use amendment, taking, taking it back to strictly a single family residential subdivision. 
which is what it appears to be on its surface. Uh, with that, I will um, stop there and answer any questions at the appropriate time. Thank you. Renee, can you take off your screen share? Yes, I sure will. Thank you. Does any of, do any of the commissioners have questions for Ms. Vincent? Okay. Uh, I do. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. So um, thank you, Renee, for the presentation. So when this neighborhood was built, it was under conditional use as well for a single family home? It was. Okay. And then there's, a, there's currently conditional use available for the vacation homes, which is the recommendation by staff, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, is this a, an HOA neighborhood or is this a, a public road neighborhood? How is that? Um, I believe it's public, but there is a homeowners association active, I believe. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Commissioner Vaticuris, did you have questions? Thank you, Mr. Trask. Um, I, I, this is a, a challenging one for me. I, I know people on both sides of this. I know the neighborhood very well. And um, I'm going to proceed as fairly as I can in this matter. Um, I do have some questions for Ms. Vincent. Um, do we have any other conditional uses other than the ones that Vice Mayor spoke? I mean, besides a single family home that's been issued, any other tourist home conditional uses for this neighborhood? In this neighborhood? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. And um, we, how many homes are we talking about? Uh, there are 19 homes in the subdivision, and tonight you have uh, conditional use applications for two of them for tourist homes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vincent, I, I hate to ask, but could you put your screen share back on with a map of the uh, neighborhood showing the location of the home? And can you see that? Yes. Um, could you point out uh, with your arrow where this these 19 homes are and the entrance that goes into it? Certainly. So the entrance comes off of Anclote Road here and you come across a little bridge and then this is the, the entire subdivision. These are the 19 homes. Okay. And uh, the two estates to the north, I know, are in single family homes. The, uh, the property directly to the north uh, is that a single family that's unincorporated Pinellas County jurisdiction. Right. And then the property to the uh, east is Anclote Isles um, Marina. Correct. And um, I was city manager when this uh, development was uh, put together and basically the WD1, actually it's kind of the, the tail wagging the dog. Uh, <laughs> the Marina was driving this whole project. So um, this has always been uh, supposed to be fam single family homes, uh, whether it's a conditional use or not, it's just a figment of the zoning. Um, the other question I had was um, in your presentation, and I and I, I'm just asking out of curiosity. You said that this is uh, leave that map on for a second. You said that this is a, a tourist oriented area. Um, how how would you explain that? I mean, I, I go ahead. Sure. I just generally looking at, at the context of, you know, of the larger area, you know, this area of Tarpon Springs is, you know, is recognized as, you know, as a tourist area. Um, you know, if you're looking at just, you know, this subdivision and of itself, you know, then yes, it's single family. I would agree with that. Well, we've got that. We've got the two estates to the north and then further north is the Ryland uh, subdivision. Correct. And then we've got the uh, individual marina to the right, to the east, and then of course, uh, all of Anclote, Isle, uh, Anclote Island Avenue uh, down to the south, that little peninsula is all commercial. Um, I, I just wanna make sure that these, actually these little areas of pockets of residences are, um, are islands of residences. So, um, uh, and it's only one way in and one way out of that neighborhood. but. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Vincent. You've uh, answered my questions and allowed me to make a couple of points on this from my perspective to make sure I understood what I was looking at. Okay, Renee, can you unshare, please? Yes. Thank you. I, I have a question for Ms. Vincent as well, if, uh, if I may. Go ahead, Commissioner. 
My just one question, um, and this comes up pretty much every time we get a conditional use, is the standards for review number five, the conditional use will not adversely affect adjoining property values. That seemed to kind of be like a central complaint from some of the neighbors that we're, we're sending in. So what's, what's staff's perspective on the actual effect of neighboring property values? Yeah, again, you know, our, our recommendation on this, you know, really takes a large cue from, you know, the fact that the, what the land use and the zoning is on the property. And again, you know, if a tourist home is operated with respect to, you know, respectfully to the surrounding properties, um, the staff is of the opinion that that should not adversely affect the property values. But, you know, if they're a nuisance, then, then that, you know, it, it's a, it's an interesting kind of cascading effect. You know, if property starts selling at a loss, I mean, that, that's what, you know, that's what establishes your property values is, you know, what, what is my value? You know, how is my property valued? What, you know, what do I pay in taxes? So it really, you know, d does this, you know, beg people to start selling because they don't want to live next to a tourist home. And I think that really bears, you know, you know on or is, is dependent upon how that tourist home is operated. So, um, I don't think that probably fully answered your question, but that's the best answer I have at this point. Okay, I appreciate it. That is my only question for now. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and uh, have the applicant sworn in. Um, Mr. Mason, I see you're here on. If you could uh, take your mute off, um, unmute yourself. Okay, Yes. if you're gonna testify, I need you to raise your right hand and be sworn under oath. You swear that the toast somebody about to give is gonna be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. yes. Okay. And if you could state the name and your relationship to the property, please. I'm Richard Mason. Uh, this is my wife, uh, Rebecca Tuma Mason. Uh, we're the we're the owners of uh, the home here. Okay. Now's your opportunity to make a presentation to the commission if you'd like to do that. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, staff, and everyone. Appreciate your time tonight and. And really appreciate what you do uh, every time, every day uh, for us in the beautiful city of uh, Tarpon Springs. Um, we we love Tarpon Springs. Uh, we've been here a good number of years. We had this home built uh, back in 96, 97. I think, so about uh, 23 years now. Because of financial reasons, uh, we had to take a job uh, out of state. We come back and forth uh, often. Uh, we didn't know conditional use uh, permit was required, so we have been doing this um, short-term vacation rentals to families um, for uh, almost seven years now um, with no problems uh, uh, whatsoever. Never, uh, never a single neighborhood complaint has come to us with the exception of a, a, com a parking complaint from uh, a neighbor that we dealt with immediately. Yeah, so we, I mean, we've been, uh, we're, we're very, very careful. Um, we love this area, we love our neighbors. Uh, we love our neighborhood. Um, we want to retire here. Um, we we're really careful to only rent to um, families that are looking for a quiet. We have even you know to some extent stricter requirements um, because it's our home. We don't want people to uh, um, to trash it. We don't want people to come here for a party. They come here for a beautiful water view to visit the sponge docks. Uh, we're delighted that we could provide a place where people can stay longer in uh, Tarpon Springs and enjoy the restaurants. And uh, we've been happy to pay quite a bit in our sales taxes here uh, to further help the, uh, the community. And um, we, we just want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, this is more than just, it's not like this is a, a bed and breakfast or a hotel, um, the single family home and um, we, we really try to keep it that way. In, in that time, never one phone call from anyone other than the next door neighbor, which as my wife said, we, we dealt with immediately and we would continue to deal with. We have a lot of local people that also help support us. Um, those that we know very well, we know, love and trust them. They're, uh, some of them are even family members, um, responsible parties that are local right nearby uh, a number of them. Uh, plus, we we can uh, we're always available uh, as well uh, to take calls and uh, and respond. Okay. Thank you very much. Do any of the commissioners have any questions of the applicants? 
Mr. Trask, I do. Mayor, go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Mason? Yes. Hi. I would like to uh, ask you a couple of questions. How many bedrooms the house? Uh, we have uh, four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. Uh, you know, the uh, maximum occupancy is up to 10 people. You can have yes. up to 10 people. So how yes. many parking spaces do you have to accommodate 10 people? We have room for three vehicles in our driveway. We don't rent to 10. That's too many for us. We, we don't limit it. 10. We limit it to nine. And, and usually my wife doesn't even like to go to nine unless it's, unless three of them are children. The fourth bedroom is really only conducive to children. Mm -hmm. We're careful to tell our guests that. Uh, one of the uh, restrictions is the property owner or designee must be available in any uh, uh, available in a timely manner to respond to complaints or problems. Uh, yes. Looking at your address, it shows to you uh, your address is in Hillsborough, Oregon. How can yes. you be here on time? Uh, we have uh, a number of people. Fran Antonellis, for example, a good close friend. Um, she meets almost every guest uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like uh, Mr. Mason has frozen there, a bad connection. Hopefully he can join us back. Let's wait a moment. Mr. Mason, can you hear us? Mr. Jump? Yes, sir. Can you see if uh, if we can connect them? I mean, have you seen them? They have disconnected from Zoom. It looks like they might be trying to reconnect. And Scott Underwood, can you put your, your uh, phone on mute, please? We're getting a re reverb back through you. Thank you. Mr. Trask, I'm finished with my questions. I'll head to Thank you, Mayor. Um, let's just see if they hop back on the line. Okay, Mayor, I, I would suggest we're waiting for them to come back online since we don't have, we don't want to just wait forever is to go ahead and uh, move forward with the public presentations. And so um, I would ask Ms. Manousis, and we'll come back to Mr. Mason if he gets back online. Um, were there any emails that you received from the public on the on the on this agenda item? No emails were received to be read into the record. Thank you. So Mr. Jump, um, let's find out if there's anybody in the public that um, has joined in, wants to speak on this matter. If you would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in. And I'll allow the first person with the raised hand in. Thank you. I don't see any way to raise my hand, but this, this is... Yeah. This Merle, is Merle, Merle we'll, we'll call you just... Two minutes we've got someone else but I, I can see you there so i'll definitely call on you okay okay so uh, i have an alan yeah yeah hi i i mean i, I actually sent in an email okay sir i'm gonna stop you for just a second if you could raise your right hand and be sworn under oath uh, you swear you swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth yes i do okay so what did so, you want to tell the commission so i actually sent an email so i, I don't know why i didn't get registered but Look, I mean, overwhelmingly, more than 80% of the you know people here signed a petition that said, you know, we really don't want this. This is a residential neighborhood. It's not a commercial neighborhood. 
Um, I, I think the I, I would I would hope that the commission would respect the neighborhood's view on whether we should allow this or not, whether it's an appropriate use. That's that's all I've got to say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll go to Mr. Um, Seaman. I, I know that you're there. You raised your right hand. Um, yes. I'm going to have you sworn in to, on, under oath, sir. You raise your right hand. You, you swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and make your presentation, sir? Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking now, basically for both of these items, even though we're talking just on the one. So, in the interest of brevity, if you don't want me to say it a second time. I, I won't, because my comments are exactly the same for both items. Uh, as a property owner in Anclote Isles, I'm against both of the conditional use permits. Uh, there's several reasons for that. Our neighbors, neighborhood's very quiet and contains only 19 homes. Both of these properties have been conducting short-term rentals without a permit for a number of years. And there have been numerous times when the people staying at these properties have caused problems and concerns for the fellow property owners that live in the neighborhood. I personally had an occasion several years ago when a uh, convicted felon came to my door and uh, requested to use my telephone. He was staying at one of the homes and he needed to call into his parole officer. Uh, the, the owners of the property say that they met the people very thoroughly, but they can't control who may be coming with those people. Uh, you know, th that's that's one of my concerns. Uh, parking has been an issue. Sometimes there are five or six cars. Uh, the driveways have limited space and they spill out onto the street, potentially causing problems for emergency vehicles. Noise has been an issue at times, especially for our friends who are on one side or the other of the properties. Uh, there have been loud parties by the pool and there have been times when they commented to, to the residents and, and were not responded to uh, appropriately by the people that were staying there. But uh, in truth, my biggest concern is potential damage to our property values that would result from a change in the quiet character of this neighborhood. I'm certain that I would not consider buying one of the homes that's next door to one of these two houses because I would not want to live with being right next door to it. And I would imagine most people would feel the same way. That hurts those people's property values. It can't help but hurt it. Uh, if we wanted to deal with short-term tenants, we would have bought a home at the beach in a busy resort area, not in the quietest, quietest little island in Tarpon Springs. Uh, the property owners are going to say that restricting the numbers of people and cars and providing local oversight will keep the homes from becoming an issue for us. But history tells me this is simply not the case. The property owners are 100 miles away, and they really have no idea what goes on when they're gone. The fact that they feel like this is not an imposition to us tells me they don't know what's going on. Uh, having somebody and tell the partying residents to be quiet or to move their cars or address whatever other issue comes up is not a solution. It's too late. We've already been bothered. The right to quiet enjoyment of our homes has already been disrupted by the time anyone could get here to deal with an issue. I encourage you to vote no on the conditional use permits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seaman. Uh, Mr. Jump, is there anyone else from the public that wishes to speak? Yes, we do have another raised hand. Okay, could you please let him or her in? Mr. Trask, <laughs> can I just clarify the previous uh, speaker, Mr. Kosey? He did send an email directly to the Board of Commissioners on September 24th. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, looks like Marie Dubuck, is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, yes. if you can raise your right hand, I'm going to swear you're under oath. Yes. You swear the testimony about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, that is correct. I do. Okay. Go um, ahead and proceed. We also sent an email. We sent it on the 11th of October. Um, 
and I'm going to read it. Um, as property owners and residents in the Ancoat Isle subdivision, we are opposed to the approval of the two conditional use permit applications, uh, 2091 and 2092, to allow short-term rentals at 1110 Marina Drive and 1145 Marina Drive. Specifically, we are becoming tired of having strangers residing in our neighborhood weekly and are worried of the crowds, parties, trash, traffic, and noise that have been associated with these rentals over the years. We also feel that this situation is detrimental to the quality of our neighborhood. We did not purchase our home in Ancoat Isles uh, with the expectation that we would live directly next to a hotel, especially during the time and concern about the spread of COVID-19. With respect to the rezoning request, we are now in a WD1 zone, which apparently allows homes to be used as short-term rentals with conditional use permits. Until the zoning meeting regarding the conditional use permits, we were unaware that our neighborhood was not zoned residential. Our neighborhood is small, quiet, and being made up of only 19 single family homes. There are no land uses on our island or neighborhood beyond that of single family residences. As a result of the above, we have submitted a petition to the city planning commission to modify our zoning to an appropriate single family only classification. Um, and we appreciate you taking this up consideration. And, and, and consideration. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jump, anyone else from the public wishing to speak? We do have another raised hand, sir. Okay, if you could let that person in. Yes, I'm, this, I'm Scott Underwood. Okay, sir, if you can raise your right hand. Yep. You swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, you know, we're, we're not speaking on your application yet. Do you, did you still want to comment on the Mason application? I just wanted to make a general comment on the, uh, you know, the Waterfront Development District. You know, I, when, I guess when both of us purchased our house, that was the zoning. I guess that uh, I don't know about, you know, being punished for something that's uh, allowed in this in this district. I don't think that uh, the other homeowners that don't expect to have a business or uh, or a tourist home in in this when you're in this zoning district. Uh, Maybe they didn't know about it, but maybe you should ask if you're buying a multi hundred thousand dollar house, I suppose, what what the zoning district is. But we bought our house. Uh, they, you know, they purchase you purchase your house and, you, you know, you go by the, the zoning that that your house is in. And so that's, you know, that's what that's what the Masons have done. And that's what we've done. And part of that zoning was to promote the businesses of the sponge stocks. And I guess that's all I'll, I'll say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Jupp, is there anyone else? And we do not have any ra other raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. We're going to go back to the... We're going to go back to the Mason. Mr. Mason is back. Would you allow him to, uh, to finish? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So, uh, Mr. Mason, you were being asked a question by the mayor. He's completed his question. Did you hear the question? I did. I heard the question. I apologize for the dead battery. I don't know how that worked. Uh, okay. uh, I apologize. Um, did, you, did you want to respond to the question? I did. I I, um, I began to. We have a um, a local friend that we uh, we've known a long time, Fran Antonellis, uh, who lives locally, and she meets almost every single guest uh, face to face. Uh, not now during this COVID, she stays a little further away, <laughs> but um, uh, she's local. As is uh, Chris Aldrich, as is uh, two of the um, ladies who uh, help uh, clean uh, that also oversee. Uh, we also have uh, the Hewleys live um, about uh, 400 yards away, <laughs> um, and uh, they also do uh, repairs and maintenance and look after things uh, as well. Lots of uh, uh, local people 
uh, that we that we know, love, and trust. All right, thank you. Uh, any other commissioners have questions of uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Mason? I've got a quick question. Yes, what, Vice Mayor, go ahead. Thanks. How do you uh, market your property? Do you market it like on collegekids.com or um, is it like on Airbnb or uh, VBRO? Yeah. How, how's that? Can you share a little bit with me? Yeah, VRBO and, uh, and Airbnb. Uh, we're careful not to do two night or three night. Uh, we don't want party people. Um, we don't do spring breakers. Um, and uh, and and if you'd like me to, uh, I'd like to uh, respond to the comments that were made. Uh, is is now a good time to do that as just well? Just a sec. Why don't we just finish with the questions from the commissioners first, and I'll give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, sure. Vice Mayor, or, do you have any other questions, Vice Mayor? No, I was just curious where they list their property at. Thank you. Gotcha. Okay. Commissioner uh, Vatikiotis, do you have questions? Yes, thank you, Mr. Trice. Um, I'll get to Commissioner Donovan in a moment. Uh, Mr. Ms. Mason, um, thank you for being residents for such a long time. 1996, that is a long time. And, and I'm hoping, to, regardless of how it goes this evening, that you remain residents. I know you're in Oregon, and, and I hope you... Uh, come back for the long term or stay with us for the long term, however you'd like to put it. We will, certainly. That's my intention. Um, how many times per year um, do you normally rent? Uh, I'm going to let my wife answer that. She does most of the uh, interviewing and, um, and responding. Um, we rent about 25 to 33 weeks a year. 25 to 33 weeks of the year. Okay. And um, out of curiosity, what I, I know you've been doing this for seven years, and, and I, I understand that. Um, what made you come to apply for a conditional use now? Or is that something that the city uh, did or, or just decided to? Yes. We, uh, we were notified that uh, it was required to have a conditional use, so we immediately um, applied, um, you know, paid for. Uh, we meet all the stipulations already um, of the conditional use. Uh, the only thing remaining is, um, you know, this this meeting, if you find in favor, and the um, and the affidavit. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Trask. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, did you have questions? Yeah, um, those actually were a couple of my questions. I just, I also wanted to know how how often you guys are actually living in Oregon versus here. Well, right now we come in the winter uh, towards the end of the year. My wife usually stays uh, longer than I because I'm still working, but uh, you can tell by the gray hair that that may not go for too much longer, <laughs> in which case we'll be here, you know, much longer. But uh, right now it's, it's, uh, it's towards the winter. We were November uh, last year, and, and, uh, but normally it's uh, December to January. Okay. This year we're here for four months. Yeah, we're here longer this year, but you know, and COVID. Extra blessed this year. We sure have. Yep. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's my only question. Okay, so Mr. Mason, did you want to respond to some of the comments that were made to the public before we close this public hearing? Uh, yes, I would. And uh, let me start by saying I, I totally understand. Um, I understand Merle and and Marie. Um, we love them. We know them. Um, you know, I would do the same thing if you asked me, do you want a renter next door compared to a homeowner? I would think, oh, no, I would want a homeowner next door. Um, but when you think about it, you, it doesn't really change anything. Anyone who, whose teenage son doesn't take out the garbage or leaves it in the street, anyone who has a birthday party has eight cars come over. Uh, we all do it, even when we lived here the first 20 years without being out of town without renting. Um, we've had parties. Uh, as to property values, the house next door sold for over a million dollars. It uh, is not seen, did not seem to have a problem. He's directly next door and he spoke in favor of it. Um, he's met the people. Um, I'll, I'll repeat, not one phone call from anyone asking us to solve something other than the one neighbor. And that's in all of the time that we've done it. Um, everything else 
is now as to this being a super quiet neighborhood and somehow someone coming for a quiet vacation is going to change that. First of all, not that quiet a neighborhood. I wish it were even quieter. I had to call air quality because the sand blasting was so loud and they didn't have their full coverage uh, that air quality came out from Pinellas County. Uh, Duckworth yeah, like Boat Builders and Florida Dredge and whatever that's called is right behind us. Um, we've got a lot of trucks, workers, people. Um, uh, Merle's Marina is right behind his house. Uh, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of tourist boats that go by with their, you know, announcing, you know, now hear this, so everyone have fun, fishing boats, etc. cetera. Um, but none of our residents are, um, are, are generally. Now we do have laws. Uh, we're also very strict. We tell them they have to be quiet. We, garbage has to go out. Only two cars in the driveway is what we ask for, even though we're permitted three. Um, all, all of those things, it's our home. We, we try to take even more diligent uh, care of it. So uh, that's just my responses there. But. All right, thank you very much. Mayor, at this point, um, we could close the public hearing uh, portion of the case. It's back to the commission for consideration, discussion, um, and consideration of resolution 2020-55. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Uh, are there any uh, addition uh, commission comments? Mayor, I, I have a question for Mr. Trask, uh, if I if I may. It, it's kind of more of a personal issue. Uh, Mr. Mason mentioned Mr. Seaman uh, owning the marina. I keep my boat at Mr. Siemens Marina, is that going to be a problem, a conflict of interest? No, he's not the applicant. He's just a, he's a participant of the public. It is not a conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, that, that was it, my comment. I, 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 are you looking for discussion as well, Mayor, or do you want to go around through the commission first? Or? Yeah, yes, I would like to go that. No, rather, we're taking uh, Vice Mayor Carr. Do you have any uh, comments on that? Yeah. I just want to ask um, Ms. Vincent another question. Mr. Trask, am I allowed to do that now? Or just, just comments? I can just make uh, statements. This is, this is ours. Of course you can. So the answer is yes. You're the okay. commission and you're the vice mayor. And so if the mayor allows it, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Vincent, so the you mentioned the Planning and Zoning Board approved this application, correct? That's correct. Okay, and there's one member that voted no against it? That's correct. Okay. Um, was there a reason behind that or? I just a compatibility. I, you know, I, I would have to go back and review the tape to, you know, to give you an exact, I don't, I okay. don't recall their reason on the record as to why they voted in opposition. No worries. Um, and then with the, was the discussion of a minimum night stay um, discuss as a condition at all with any of the applicants like not you need to have at least a four night stay at minimum um or something along those lines no okay um so i don't have any other questions for you miss vincent um i did ask the police chief for um some information for the neighborhood uh and there's been no police calls over the past year for this applicant um, as well, I know there's been some emails that have been received by um, some of the neighbors. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear because I wanted to check on that to make sure if there is a nuisance issue that we need to be aware of um, that it's addressed. Um, but overall, um, okay, being quasi-judicial, if I remember correctly, Attorney Trask, I'm not supposed to say which, which way I'm leaning, right? No, this is discussion now. The The public portion of the hearing is closed. You can discuss it amongst yourselves. Okay. And um, so if you want to discuss the your position the way you want to vote, absolutely. Now is the time to do that. Okay. So the zoning district does allow this um, through a condition use. Um, and the zoning district hasn't changed since the inception of the building of the neighborhood. Uh, and I, I do think it's the right of the owners to apply for this from a conditional use standpoint uh, with the planning and zoning board also approving the application and also fits the land use for the city. Um, I really don't see any reason that the city or the commission has the right to say no uh, in this situation. I think they've proved that they um, fit all the criteria 
and uh, I'm happy to support this with the conditions that Ms. Vincent had put forward. Um, the only thing I would maybe recommend is looking at a minimum night stay as an additional condition, um, maybe to, to appease um, some of the concerns by the neighbors. Um, but I, I'm, I feel comfortable with the comments I heard tonight from the applicants as well. Thank you very much, Mayor Carter. Uh, Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the applicant. I think everything was handled really professionally. Um, and I absolutely wish them all the best. Um, uh, respectfully, I, I just, I can't get over the standards for review number five on this one. I just do believe that it's going to adversely affect property values. And that's kind of the tough part about these quasi judicial hearings is that, you know, it takes some of the, you know, the personal opinion out of it. Um, but I'm, I'm going to vote no on this, um, due to the affecting property values. Thank you. Commissioner Patikiotis. Um, like I said, I, I know people on both sides of this issue, and I also know the neighborhood very, very well. I was city manager when we developed it. Um, we've got neighborhoods to the north. We've got the two individual estates, and uh, I know the sandblasting very well <laughs> as far as the dust goes, the diamond grit and things like that you have to constantly uh, um, clean. Um, I, I'm just very fearful that, uh, and, and I also asked that we, if there was another conditional use that have, has ever been applied for this neighborhood, and it hasn't, and it's been um, 25 years in existence and things, and, and I'm just very fearful of these anomalies with regard to the zoning kind of driving something like this and, and providing that. Um, I don't know that the, these sort of, uh, for example, the... Um, uh, the the uh, Ryland Home subdivision to the north. I, I'm not sure what that would, whether that would allow a tourist home or not. I maybe Ms. Vincent, if you're available, do you know offhand that that would be the case? I do not believe the zoning will allow a tourist home there. The underlying land use does have a commercial recreation overlay on it, which would support it, but the zoning does not, to my knowledge. Okay, and and that's what I'm getting at. I think. That particular area is is kind of developed, and then we've got the other neighborhood even further to the north of that. That's on the actually it's under construction right now. That I don't believe will allow tourist homes either. So I, I just think that I, I I very respectfully disagree with Ms. Vincent's observation that this is a, a tourist oriented area. I, I think it's really a residential uh, oriented area, and um, and I think it's an anomaly that's a WD one. And I'll be honest, I don't remember why it's a WD-1. I just know it had a lot to do with the uh, marina and allowing the development to take place there. Um, I also very remember your neighborhood very distinctly before it was even anything. It was just basically spoil material from the previous dredgings of the river. And, um, and I, I know how that was created, too. As a matter of fact, part of your neighborhood was a beach, a local beach there for a while because the, the sand was so nice. So uh, I'm not going to be able to support this because of that. I don't want to be the one that starts setting a precedence for allowing uh, tourist homes into what I believe have been historic um, residential neighborhoods. I think part of Tarpon Springs uh, really deserves um, tourist homes, vacation homes. I don't think this is one of them. I think if it was down in the Sponge Docks area, the Special Area District, things like that, where it's very clear, um, I would consider that. I do understand this is a WD-1, but I simply believe it's incompatible with the, uh, the neighborhood. Um, thank you, Mr. Tress. Thank you. Uh, I know the area very well, and, uh, I, and I know this is a, uh, a residential area. Um, it's actually an island. It's one way in and not one way out. Uh, it's always been a single family homes there. And, um, uh, I really don't see that it's a compatible to the neighborhood to have a rental homes there, so I cannot support that. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the uh, conditions of staff. I'll second it for the purpose of a vote. And roll call. Maddy No. Commissioner Donovan? No. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Meryl, who's this? No. Thank you. We are now going to uh, the next item.
tell you, before we go to the next item, let's take a five minutes break. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we now reconvene the BOC meeting at 9.13 p.m. The next item on the agenda is item number 22, the uh, resolution 2020-57, the application 2092, condition of use for tourist home in WD1 1110 Marina Drive, Underwood, quasi-traditional. City Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Mayor, this is resolution 2020-57, a resolution of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, approving application number 20-92, requesting a conditional use permit to allow the operation of a tourist home at 1110 Marina Drive, located on the north side of Marina Drive in the WD1 Waterfront Development District, Zone District, providing for findings, providing for conditions, and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2020-57 read the quasi-judicial procedures. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrate that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Ms. Vincent, you've already been sworn under oath. You can go ahead and proceed with the presentation of the application. Thank you. This is application 20-92 from Scott Underwood for property at 110, excuse me, 1110 Marina Drive. Again, um, this application is virtually identical to the previous application. They are requesting conditional use for a tourist home. Uh, the property is owned WD-1 and has a land use designation of commercial recreation. Um, as conditioned, uh, staff does find that this um, uh, or that this is compliant with the review criteria, and uh, we do recommend approval. Um, I would enter into the record the staff report um, and uh, everything that's associated in the backup, along with the uh, conditions of approval that were read during the previous application uh, that are on the resolution. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board did review this and recommended approval by a vote uh, with one dissenting vote and staff recommendation is to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions of Ms. Vincent, Vincent on this application? I have none. Okay, I'm seeing everyone shake their head no. Well, let's go ahead then and bring Mr. Underwood back in. Uh, as the applicant, Mr. Underwood, can you unmute yourself please? He is apparently okay. also. Okay. okay, I think I'm back. Sorry, yep. we were muted. Okay, Mr. Underwood, you've already been sworn under oath. So um, you can go ahead and proceed and make your presentation to the Board of Commissioners. Yes, we purchased the home. Um, we're part time residents. Uh, we live up north and uh, we are always about, we spent five months in Tarpon Springs and uh, the rest up in South Dakota. So I guess uh, we, we purchased the home with, uh, you know, I guess the problem comes that with the zoning and everything, we purchased the home thinking that in order to make our mortgage payment and everything, we may need to have a little more income coming in for the second home. So we have rented the house out, uh, you know, rented the house out a week at a time for probably about as long as Becky and the Masons have. So I guess, uh, you know, it was our understanding reading the water development district uh, guidelines and everything that, uh, you know, that might be that might be allowed. And so we, we've basically been using that money to help uh, make a few months of the mortgage payments. We rent about 12, 12 weeks a year, uh, mostly in the wintertime. And we have people summer, in the summer. In the summer, sorry, we have people uh, 
in charge that uh, take care of, you know, meet the people, meet the guests and everything, uh, keep the house in order and that, that type of thing. And like I said, we do, we don't rent, we, t we do a seven day minimum. We, we do not rent uh, short term. So I guess, like I said, I guess the problem comes in that I don't know why it was zoned the way it was, but basically we're being punished for <laughs> using something that the zoning permitted. And, uh, you know, I, I realized we need a conditional use permit and that type of thing, which we didn't know, you know, originally. So it, I, and I can see why possibly it was, I mean, it, it the neighborhood is next to commercial properties. And when they talk about the noise, maybe that comes from some of the rentals, it's nothing like the sandblasting that goes on for hours on end. And, uh, you know, you are on an industrial road. That's an industrial road that goes by with up to semi trucks, you know, that uh, travel just a few hundred feet from, from your development. So yeah, it is, res you know, there are uh, single family houses there. And uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what to say. We just, uh, we try to be uh, good caretakers and take care of things if things come up. We've had a couple neighbors contact us over the years uh, about things we try to call right away and, you know, get it squared away. But yeah, I, you know, it's the exact opposite of, you know, you buy a house in this neighborhood you should expect maybe that people might use it for something of that purpose. And we bought it thinking that, you know, that it could be possibly used and then kind of like changing the rules in midstream for us. So it, it is a hardship uh, for us. Uh, we're still making mortgage payments. We're 68 years old. We would like to get it paid off, but uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's, you know, that's after, after the last applicant, I guess that's, you know, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Underwood. Um, does any of the commission have questions of Mr. Underwood on his application? I, I do, Mr. Trask. Go ahead, Commissioner. Um, Mr. Underwood, the, um, how long have you owned the home? You may have said it, but I may have not heard it. 16 years. 16 years. 16 years? Yes. Okay, and, and you've been renting for that long? Not renting, you renting, you own the home, but have you been renting the home out for 16 years? No, probably. Probably six. six five or six. Six, in, six or in, seven in, years out of the 16, probably. We did. We may I ask if, how, why is it that you started renting the home for, you know, five or six years ago? Well, you know, when the, when he came a little bit, when some of the websites came along and it became uh, a little bit, uh, you know, there was more of that renting tourist homes going on. We looked into it. We, uh, you know, not much existed 14 years ago, uh, or that type of thing. So, and we were friends with, with the Masons too. And so, yep, we started, and we, we pretty much use the same VRBO is what we use, you know, most of the time for, for our rentals. Mm -hmm. We do have some people that we know that rent too, but. A lot of return people that come And a lot of people come year. back again. You know, the, I guess the issue is, you know, you say we're not in the, you know, the, <laughs> tar we're not in the sponge docks area when you can see the sponge docks across the water, but, uh, you know, most of the people that say comment that, well, they love the sponge docks. We have multiple people that come back multiple years and they visit the sponge docks more than once. Usually they, they enjoy the restaurants and they enjoy the atmosphere. So it is, uh, it, as far as We're using it for what it's, there isn't a lot of uh, motels close, really close to the sponge docks in, in Tarpon mm -hmm. Springs. So when you think about it, People are a lot more likely when they're say staying at our house to you know to return multiple visits than if you were 10 or 15 miles down the road kind of a thing and a lot of the people are they're coming back visiting families uh in the tarpon springs area you know parents that are retired and have a house too small 
for the family, stuff like that. And that's why you get, sometimes you get a group of people there, you get a group of cars. And a lot of times it is, it is family members. You know, why would you come to Florida in the summertime? <laughs> mostly, really- mostly to visit families is the way it, it, it works out. So. Mr. Underwood, I think that you've answered the commissioner's question. You're just um, adding yep. a little extra narrative. Want to wait see if there are any other commit commissioner co- uh, questions of you. Uh, no, th- you thank you. I had no more questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other uh, commissioner comments or questions, rather, of Mr. Underwood? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I've got a quick question. Yes, Vice Mayor. Um, does this create a hardship? To that, uh, Mr. Underwood, does this create a hardship for you all as uh, property owners? Well, yes. I mean, you've got certain plans and we're retired, uh, not working anymore. You know, it does. And I I don't think that, uh, you know, maybe that people take a lot of, con- you know, consideration in that, that you are affecting somebody's life when you change something like this. So it... Uh, Oh yeah, I mean we'll survive. We'll we'll make things work, but it it's going to be a lot. You know, it's harder. We like I said, we only rent about it. It we it covers about three months maybe of expenses for us. You know, for the year, and we're you know we pay taxes and we actually pay more taxes than our neighbors because we aren't permanent residents. So you know we're citizens and we like Tarpon Springs. And you understood that they, there was a conditional use available in this yeah. zoning district, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is that something that you knew when you purchased a home or is that just something you discovered? It is, we discovered along the way when we when we were thinking about renting it out and we didn't think that Tarpon Springs allowed it. That's one of the reasons we didn't rent right away. Then we found out, you know, we, we found out about the that our waterfront development district. So, you know, it was, we didn't think we'd be able to do it. And then we found out and looked at the, you know, you look at the development district rules and regs and some of those things are listed. So I guess, you, you know, you can have the house sit empty and nobody visits the sponge stocks. You can have a few people coming to visit. I'm guessing the merchants would rather have a few visitors, you know, the you know, on the sponge stocks. Okay. Have you noticed any of the houses selling in your neighborhood? Yeah, they're at the highest values they've ever sold for. Yeah, this, this that, what was, you know, sandblasting behind me would be more of an issue than moving in next door to myself you know and of course we have the sirens coming by now and you know you got semi trucks that put on their air brakes when they make the 90 degree you know there by the by the entrance so i can see why it was probably in the first place sold the way it was but i don't know if it's anomaly or not but it, it's it's really not our fault i mean we weren't around when they zoned, you know zoned it so yeah no i mean i think i think you're doing what's right you have the opportunity to do this um so i mean from your view it's there's no detrimental um value impact to the properties because you're seeing them sold at highest ever and you've been running an airbnb or vbro for the past six or seven years yeah there's never been a complaint to the city ever from from our property all right i have no further questions thank you any other commission questions? Not seeing any, thank you. So uh, Michelle, were there any uh, emails that came in from the public? No um, emails from the public other than the ones that were sent directly to the Board of Commissioners. Okay, thank you. All right, so Mr. Jump, do we have anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this agenda item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in. We do have raised hands, so I'll allow the first person in. Thank you. Okay, sir, is, can you state your name for us again, please? Hello? Alan? Alan, are you there? Yeah, you must be on mute. Uh, we can't hear you. So, Mr. Jump, can you call, bring the next person in, please? Yes, sir. Marie, can you hear us? 
Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, and you've already been sworn under oath, so you can go ahead and make any comments that you would like at this point. Okay. Um, wow, this is, this is really tough for me. Um, it, Mr. Underwood claims that they have people that take care of everything and everything is wonderful. Well, the people who take care of everything is my husband and I, no. because when there is a problem next door, uh, we have had the renters come by and ask for help. We have had their cleaning person come by and ask for help uh, with the pool, with their air conditioning. If she needs somebody to open the house for an exterminator, she calls me. She called me just two weeks ago because they, need, they had a leak in their roof and they needed somebody to let the roofers in. And the per, their, her cleaning lady was available at one time, but the roofing company changed the time. I would have done it, but I could not because my husband and I had doctor's appointments. Basically, this has become a burden on us that we do not want any longer. Also, we have, there were 14 people here this summer, one group. They had two large SUVs and they pulled a U-Haul with all their luggage. This is not six people, eight people. They have a three bedroom home and they have a small loft area that they have put bunk beds in. But it's a three bedroom home. They had 14 people. And I'm not exaggerating. We also had one group come and they were playing loud, vulgar music. We said nothing. We try not to complain. We try to just, just let it go. But the very next day we were outside and we heard them come out. We were out there before they, they were off somewhere. They came by and they yelled inside, oh, they're already out there. So we're being made to feel like we are not allowed in our own backyard. And I have to be honest with you, I, can't, I really don't wanna take this anymore. It's really not fair. And maybe we were dumb, but when we bought our home, we have lived in our home longer than anybody else on the island. We bought our home in June of 96 and we closed on it in July of 96. And we have been very active in the association the entire time we've lived here. And we have tried to be good neighbors. We have really tried to be good neighbors. We've tried to do everything we could, but we're, we're really, we're at, we're retired. This is our home. We don't have another home to go to. And with COVID-19, we have been so, you know, social distancing. We have been isolating because I have autoimmune issues. I have asthma. My husband has had cancer three times. We don't go out without wearing a mask. We don't, we, all we go is to get medicine, probably doctors and to go to the store and to have strangers next door really? all the time is it's really, it's a burden on us. And that, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Jump, is there anyone else from the public? If anyone else would like to speak, please raise your hand. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Mr. Seaman, I see that you're there. Did you raise your hand? I didn't take a look. Did you want to speak on this agenda item? You're on mute. Uh Yes, um, uh, I, my comments would be exactly the same as, as the last one, so I'll, I'll spare you the time and let you go on with the meeting. Nothing is, is at all different about this application over the last one. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Mayor, it's back to the Commission for discussion and consideration of the application. Okay, thank you, Mr. Trask. Uh, we go to uh, commission comments. I would like to uh, say that, that I, I have the same concerns as I had with the last, uh, with the previous application. Um, both of those houses in the same neighborhood. So uh, I, uh, I cannot support it. I believe is not compatible to the neighborhood. Vice Mayor Carr. I've got no further comments, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I would just say, um, you know, again, similar to our last item, I'm not trying to create a burden on anybody. It's not my goal to be unfair here. 
um, it just comes down to the standards for review and my belief that it's going to affect adjoining property values. Commissioner Tikiotis. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. My thoughts aren't any different. Thank you. Thank you. The chair will detain a motion. I move to approve. Second. In roll call. Mr. Vadikiotis? No. Mr. Donovan? No. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Alhusas? No. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is on the miscellaneous item number 23, the petition to amend zoning and land use of uh, Anglo Isles subdivision. Staff report, Ms. Vinson. Uh, thank you. Um, presented for your consideration um, is a petition uh, requesting to amend um, the zoning and land use of Anglo Isles. Uh, this is a subdivision that, that you been reviewing as it relates to these conditional uses. Um, generally speaking, staff recommendation is to, you know, we would recommend that the board, um, you know, uh, authorize staff to go ahead and initiate this requested rezoning and land use amendment. Um, you have a petition of 15 of 19 of the property owners submitted for your consideration. Um, only a petition would normally only require 51% of the property owners, so we are well well exceeding that. And as part of the discussion this evening, um, you've obviously heard, you know, historically this property was was WD1, but in reality it functions, you know, as a single family subdivision. So it probably is appropriate to uh, to correct this at this point in time. Um, just and for the record, in the WD1 zoning district, there are a lot of things that are permitted uses by right that. Um, you really don't want in a single family residential district like this, so. Thank you, Ms. Vinson. I, uh, I support the request to initiate the process to correct the zoning. Would you please explain what's the process of doing that? If the board authorizes uh, tonight, then staff will go ahead and uh, we will do. We will initiate the map amendments for the for the zoning map and the um, and the land use. Um, I'll need to evaluate this as to you know what the appropriate zoning district would be, um, and uh, and what the appropriate land use would be. But if I have direction to go forward, we'll 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 do that, and then we will advertise it, and we will basically be the applicant. Thank you, Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, I have no problem uh, correcting an issue that was um, with the wrong zoning of the neighborhood, so I'm happy to support that. Commissioner Donovan? No questions for me, Mayor. I'm happy to support it. Commissioner Tikiotis? No, Ms. Vincent, um, we're looking at our R100 or 100A. Is that, is that about right? Um, I'm initially going to say no because the the – the zoning district that the WD1 reflects back to for the district setback requirements is actually R60. So I'm going to have to finesse that a little bit and see how we, what's the best way for us to do that because the R60 obviously allows for much less um, front side and rear yard setback requirements, but it also allows for duplexes. So it may even be necessary to maybe just do a plan development on this so we can just call it out um, specifically. You know, the reason the reason I'm asking is you, you'll find something that's going to fit as a residential neighborhood without the uh, the the ability to have uh, vacation homes. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Ms. Manusas, we go to our public comments. Uh, no emails <laughs> received, other than those sent directly to the board. Thank you. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone that is wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. <clears throat> Merle Seaman, I don't and know. We do have Merle and um, a phone in. <laughs> you want the phone in first or you want me? Go ahead, Mr. Simon. go ahead. I'll be quick, really. I, I just encourage you to support the item it's it's just a simple cleanup of of things that should have been uh this way a long time ago so i appreciate your consideration uh and and thank the commission thank you 
Mr. Jim, would you uh, connect the next person? Hello, it's it's Marie Dubuque again. I just wanted to say thank you very, very much for taking up these issues. And we really appreciate you taking up the rezoning for us. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll allow the next person in. Alan, can you hear us? Yeah, so um, thank you for uh, hearing us. And, and look, I mean, this, this is a residential area. It, it's, it's not commercial. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, sorry that, that it wasn't done that way like years ago, but let's fix it now. Thank you. Mr. Joe, anybody else? And we do not have any other raised hands at this time. Thank you. It's back to the uh, commissioner. If we don't have any more comments, uh, the chair will entertain a motion. Here, I have a point of order question for Ms. Vincent. Sure, go ahead. Uh, do we, Ms. Vincent, do we accept the petition and then uh, approve to move ahead with residential rezoning? Would that be the proper wording? That, that would be fine. It, it does say that it has to be um, by motion. So yes, I think um, just the motion to uh, direct staff to re you know, initiate rezoning and land use amendment to uh, a single family residential district and uh, that would be sufficient. Okay, thank you. That's all, man. thank you. I'll a make a motion. I guess we're waiting for me. I'll make a motion to uh, direct staff to proceed with a uh, to amend the uh, zoning and land use uh, for Anclo Isles subdivision to a residential use. Second. In roll call. Mr. Matigotis. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mayor Park. Yes. Merrill Hussis. Yes. So, Ms. Vincent, we're going to be waiting for you to bring it back then. So get on it. Thank you. The uh, next item and the last item is number 24, appointment to the Public Art Committee. Um, the office has been notified the uh, resignation of uh, Theodore Ioannou. Additionally, the uh, term of Ms. Janice has expired, will be expired October 31st, and she is interested to be reappointed. Or we can uh, move one of the alternates to that position, or we can select uh, a person from the list. Vice Mayor Carr. So this is just Ms. Jennings' position, right? Yes. Um, I would move to move Michaela all up, all up, I don't know how to say her last name, um, the alternate number two to the full-time ex, um, expired term of uh, Theodore. I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Vice Mayor? Say that again, please. So there's two items here. Are we just talking about item number one or Let's item number two? Let's do the number one first, so then okay. we can come back to the second one. This is the... Uh, uh, the vacancy created by uh, uh, Joe Jennings, she wants to be reappointed, or the options that we have. Okay. Excuse no, me, I, I mean, you have, excuse me, you have to vote on both. Yes, but we're going to select it first and then we're going to make a motion. Okay. Um, I, would, I would move to put alternate number two in Ms. Jennings' position. Okay. Commissioner Donovan. This might be a question for staff. Um, and I know we've talked about this with our last few appointments. Um, what's the status of term limits for uh, serving on our committees? Okay, that's gonna be brought back to you um, once we get um, with the city attorney. 
Um, Irene's going to be working with him on that, and that's probably not going to be till the beginning of the new year. I know they these this board, I believe, does not have term limits as it is right now. Okay, so I guess we'll, we'll cross. There is a code section. You can't serve more than ten years on a board. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's it's nothing against any individuals on any of our committees. I really appreciate all their hard work, but um, I wish we, as a board of commission, had stronger term limits. So that's going to be something I'm very interested in, in trying to get fresh blood and trying to get new opinions um, onto this board. Um, as far as the board action tonight, I'm okay to reappoint Ms. Jennings um, as the chairman uh, with the knowledge that, you know, we have an upcoming discussion in terms of uh, actual term limits. Um, and is that all you want from me for now, Mayor, or do you also want my recommendation for number two? We just no, just the one. Okay, then that's then that's all I have for right now. Okay. Commissioner Tikiotis. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, that was to reappoint Ms. Jennings. Yes. Is, is that what you said? Reappoint Ms. Jennings. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I I agree with that. Thank you. Uh, I'll also agree to reappoint Ms. Jennings. So let's go to the uh, other uh, vacancy that we have created by uh, Mr. Theodore Ioannou. We need to uh, either move uh, one of the alternates, one or two, or select a person from the list. Vice Mayor Carr. Um, I'm, I'm uh, David Salo. He's a I, how do I say this politically correct? So we have more of a mature, um, uh, aged um, public art committee. Um, and then we just lost one of our younger um, individuals on the board. I think David is a, he's got some experience here in public art, or at least as an artist from schooling. Um, and he showed some interest here. Um, so I would appoint David Salo to fill an unexpired term. Thank you. Uh Commission Donovan. Yeah, I was impressed with his application. I like Mr. Salo as well. Commissioner Tikiotis. Um, uh, Ms. Manusa, how, how long do we have until that uh, an expired term ends? This this term for this appointment right here expires 2023. Oh, so it's it's. Uh, Okay, so uh, Theodore expi uh, retired or resigned towards the end of his term, is that correct? Yes, he, his term would have ended October 31st of this year. Okay, thank you. Um, my, I would like to move up, I, I would like to move one of the alternates up to full-time position. I, I, I don't know that historically that's been the case, but that's been my experience. And, and uh, I'd like to uh, move Mr. Stackhouse up to the uh, permanent position and uh, move someone new into the alternate position. Thank you. Well, now we can act. Uh, I will request to have uh, entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to reappoint Joan Jennings uh, to another three year term that will expire October 31st, 2023 and appoint David Salo to fill unexpired term um, of Theodore, uh, this term will expire on October 31st, 2023 as well. Second. What point of order, do we vote on both of them at the same time? This is one, yeah. Just one motion for both positions? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Vatigotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Meryl Huzas. Yes. Thank you. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda. And we're going to go to staff comments. Um, Police Chief, oh, here you are. Fully, okay. Chief, any comments? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trask? No comments, Mayor. Thank you very much. Mr. Lecours? You're on mute, Mark. No comments. Thank you. Ms. Van Nusses? No comment. 
Vice Mayor Carr. Uh, back to Mac meetings have been really exciting. Um, Mark, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think we all did well uh, last night with the police board, um, with the union board, and also with the staff. So I'm proud again to say that um, the commission has stand and will stand behind the Tarpon Springs, Tarpon Springs Police Department um, in any way we can support them. Uh, I'm proud that we have our own uh, police force here within the city as well. Um, I, I think the police has done a great job. I did notice a, um, a police person on bike patrol today. Uh, I thought that was great to see as well. Uh, I just want to say great job on that. Um, I, I think it's, it's a much different approach. Um, and it's refreshing to see that. Um, so I also, um, I'm going to be on vacation the next week and a half or so. Um, and I'm going to be traveling back uh, in town the day of our next meeting. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it in time or not based on how far I'm traveling. So with that, I want to go ahead and ask um, for an excused absence for the next commission meeting on the 27th. I will ask for motion for that. Motion, motion. <laughs> and roll call. Who second that? Second. I, you, <laughs> between <laughs> Commissioner Donovan and myself, who's been used to so choose. <laughs> Actually, probably unanimous for uh, Vice Mayor Carr, so. <laughs> Commissioner Vatagiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Meryl, who's it? Yes. Thank you. No further Mr. comments. Donovan, do you have any comments? No, I just want to thank the board for an efficient meeting tonight. I uh, I don't know what I'm going to do till midnight. We're usually here till then, so I'll probably just stare at my screen. But uh, no, I, I appreciate everybody's comments tonight, and uh, thanks, staff, for uh, putting together a good agenda. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'll be happy if it ever gets behind us, this COVID thing. It just drives me nuts, and, and we we just kind of get caught up in it and everything. So I'll, I'll be happy when uh, hopefully this will end at some point. Um, I do have a question, though. Um, I sent uh, Attorney Trask a question. Actually, I, I don't know whether it's certainly more than one concerning the uh, uh, concerns with the uh, uh, firefighter union negotiations. And um, and, and I want to ask uh, city, uh, uh, city manager, uh, Lucoris, do, do you, th I, is it, I guess it's called a shade meeting or something like that. If, from what I read, do, do, would you need something like that for finishing up with the firefighters or I don't know where we are right now. Um, we're coming back with a meeting within the next week and I'll know then if I need one or not. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll know after that meeting. Okay. Uh, that would be before best and final, I guess, is, is what I'm getting at or whatever you Absolutely. call it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I just would like to, uh, to, uh, to thank the staff for doing an excellent job in preparing all those meetings um, back to back. Also, uh, our board, Board of Commissioners, I think we're, we're doing a very good job and being very professional. With that, I want to thank you all. And that concludes the uh, regular session meeting, and it's adjourned at 9.52 p.m. Good night. Thank you. Good night,